All right, here we go, Tony Yeo, welcome back. Come on, let's get a clap. Let's get a clap, man. Let's build him. Back for the fourth time? Yeah, man. Fourth time, I think? Yeah, fresh from overseas, man. Right. Yeah. Had International a, had Yeo. A, had a, had a uh, good trip. You know, uh, got a chance to go to a lot of places, Greece, uh, Switzerland, uh, all kind of places, man. Dubai, you know, me and Murder having a ball out there. I saw that. You know, best hotels, Four Seasons, Armani Hotel, you know, just, mm -hmm. just living the life, man. Caviar pancakes. Caviar pancakes, man. <laughs> well, um, let's talk about what's happening right now. And mm -hmm. I think the most important thing is what happened to Takeoff. Right. Rest in peace, Takeoff. Rest in peace, Migos. Takeoff. Shout out to the Migos. Yeah, Pete, everybody over there. That really came out of nowhere because Takeoff was the quiet dude. He yeah, wasn't beefing with no one. You, you kind of got to be careful with that because that's still like an open investigation. But it's like when you look on nowadays, you look on YouTube and people have it solved already. And I don't like to say no names or because, you know, they don't you don't want them saying Vlad TV is the police. So it's like when it's an open investigation, I like stay away from it. But rest in peace to take off. And, um, you know, it's tragic. You know, but you know, in this game, you, you know how it is. You know, in the rap game, man, you know how it is with artists and rest in peace to take off. But you know, at the end of the day, it's something that you know I I really don't want to talk about. Okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> I stay away from that because that's when they're gonna be like, "Yo, Vlad, Vlad, the police." You know what I'm saying? And I don't want them to say that about you because I right. I don't believe you, the police. You know, um, you got real one on here like Boosie and me. If you got Boosie and Yayo on here, there's no way that you know what I'm saying. I would believe that, but it's an open investigation and it's tragic like that people, I could just say it was crazy is when they put it online and put it on different websites. It's it's kind of crazy to me, you know, rest in peace to him, his family, you know, you know, Pete and everybody over there, but I don't, you know, want to talk about that one. Well, speaking in general, uh -huh. okay, when you guys move around, because G-Unit moves around, you know, at, at the point where you guys had the most beef, you were the hottest, selling multi-platinum and diamond, you guys were outside. Right. You know, you guys were not just sitting there in the studio and never doing shows. You guys were city to city, show to show, and everything else like that. Definitely. When you go into different cities, how is it do you really maintain your own level of security I when mean, other people are around? I mean, and I mean, you know, like on the tours like Anger Management and other tours, um, you realize that certain cities is like, you know, it's dangerous. You go to Chicago, you know, you go to Cincinnati, you know, you go to uh, Detroit, you go to California, it's just, it's dangerous. If it's an after party, do the after party, go back to your hotel and chill. You know, you bring girls to your room, you gotta be careful with that because a girl can line you up or you got jewelry in there, so you gotta worry about that. You gotta remember that's a stranger, you just, just met her, so the game is just dangerous. You know what I'm saying? You got all kinds of things you got to worry about as for being an artist. Going city to city, all the times that G Unit right. has gone on tour by themselves or the bigger tours, like the anger management and everything else like that. Are there, you know, any situations that happened that you could talk about being in oh, a foreign yeah, there's, city there's, and, and there's plenty getting of, caught up? There's plenty of situations I could talk about, like being in Cincinnati, almost having like fights in the mall or. Being in Cincinnati, you know, dudes is breaking on the tour bus windows or, you know, being in L.A., there's mad gang members everywhere or it's, you know, Suge stories. There's all kind of stories that G-Unit could tell you about, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, so it's just like, I mean, it, keep, it keeps you on point because, you know, once you on top, you a target. So you guys just got to move right. You know what I mean? Like we have bulletproof trucks. We will invest it. I think for a lot of artists, it's time to go back to that. Mm, that's a good like point. invest into that bulletproof truck and maybe have a vest on and just move a certain way because at the end of the day, like you got fans out there that love you, you got family that love you, and, and, and you got your homies that love you. You are the bag. You are the one that's supposed to always be protected. That's what I learned. You know, so maybe artists need to get back to that. You know, having more armed security around. Bulletproof vehicles, vests. I think that's what, what for, for the new artists, that's what's necessary 
to come. And a lot of them got bulletproof trucks already and stuff like that. But, you know, maybe the vest too. I, I mean, yeah. For me, I've always had this issue with the concept of checking in, right? Because some people are like, well, you got to check in in different cities and so right. forth. To me, that's a formula to I'll, get caught I'll, up with someone else's bullshit. Yeah, I mean, listen, man. Shit, I, to me, I don't. I think people take it the wrong way. Like, say, checking in, like, say, you might have family in L.A., mm -hmm. right? And my family might be affiliated with these Crips or these Bloods. That's not really checking in. That's his people. So if I come to L.A. and know his people is rolling 60s or bounty hunter Bloods or whatever it may be, I might be cool with them. It's not really checking in. And, and what it is, it's kind of cool because... You know the demographics of the neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? You know that when you're in Hollywood, you're right near Hoover Street or Compton or here or there. So, you know what I'm saying? Like people well, like Hollywood and Compton. Well, you know, people will tell you because people from there, the best thing I know from, and there's some good dudes, shout out to all the homies in LA. You know, all, all, all the people, there's people out there. And um, they'll just give you the information like, yo, man, you might want to go to this Roscoe's instead of that Roscoe's, rest right. in peace, P and B, not. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But like, or you might want to go here, or yo, you right here if you get a Airbnb here. You know what I'm saying? I don't even like Airbnbs. No, nah, I don't. Honestly, like I don't stay in them at all. I don't even like them either. Don't like them at all. Like stay, I was in if you LA. Have any sort of money, stay in a real I, five I was, star, four star I was, hotel. I was in LA with some of the homies, um, some that I met, and we was like doing some business. You know what I mean? With you know, with, uh, going to LA, you know, with the cannabis because we'd be in stores with cookies and everything like that. Shout to Steve Lavelle and Burner and all that. And um, and the Airbnb was right down the block from what when what happened with Pop Smoke. That's what I'm saying. Pop Smoke was staying at an Airbnb. Yeah, if the Airbnb was the, we was in was like right down the block. Exactly. From if where was that happened at. at you know the you know the Mandarin yeah. or the Four Seasons, he would be alive right now. Yeah, definitely. Guaranteed. That's how Guaranteed. we always. I mean, that's how we always move like hotel because you know there was really back then there really wasn't no Airbnb like that. Right. You know what I mean? You could rent a mansion, and that was really about it. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, I, I feel you, man. I, I feel like a lot of times you end up, you know, cutting corners. And, you and know, ain't they so saying somewhere Airbnb like they down because a lot of corporations bought a lot of the Airbnb's houses, so there's too many Airbnb's or something like that? Probably. Could have sworn I read something like yeah, that. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, no, I mean, the, the whole housing market is, like, shifting around. You know, my whole thing is, like, okay... Checking in the city, if they're just, someone's giving you, okay, go here, don't go here, or whatever. My thing is like, if I go to a city, and instead of getting regular security, I get a whole bunch of gangsters around me, and I move around with them, now whatever problems they have, I'm potentially in the middle of as but well. I, but I see it like this. If, if, if you're just going somewhere to handle your business, like if you're going to do Jimmy Fallon show in LA or something like that, or whatever show. You know what I mean? Just, mm -hmm. just, just for example. Fifty would go do the show, or I would go do the show, and or we would go do the show, and we'd learn to just go back to the hotel. Yeah. You don't have to go to that after party and do that. Just handle your business and just kind of keep it moving. And I think that's what kept me around because that's how I move. I don't announce everywhere I'm at at that time because you got to remember Instagram wasn't around before. Right. Instagram is kind of more of a new generational thing. So you know, people say, "You know, I'm here, I'm there." And, you know. Yeah, no, not me. Not Everybody me. Like, got camera phones. It's, it's different now. Right. Like, all the photos that me and you have posted yeah. were posted, like, six hours a day after yeah, we were already gone. Like, we're not, we're not doing nothing in and real then, time. And then, and then on top of that, it's like, um, how could I say it? Like, there's so many cameras now that, like, you'll do a crime and police will solve it, like, a couple of weeks later. Right. Because it's, like, 100 million cameras everywhere. So you gotta think, in the early 2000s, wasn't really that many cameras like that. They got facial technology, all kinds of stuff. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it, it, oh, it's yeah. just crazy, man. Yeah, no, they found, remember like, they found the Boston Marathon bombers with cameras out of literally 100,000 people on the street. They figured out the actual dudes who laid right. those bombs. Right. That's the type of technology. I remember the craziest shit. This is a true story. I don't know if I, we've never talked about this before, but I remember I interviewed DMX, right? right. I was at Power 105 right. and DMX rest in, showed up. Rest in peace to DMX. Rest in peace DMX. Right. 
and it was this crazy interview, right? So me and my girl were driving back. Right. And, and at the time I'm living in Jersey. So we're, we're pulling towards the, um, the Lincoln Tunnel, right. right? And I give her the camera and she's looking at the viewfinder and she's looking at the, at the interview as we're driving home. Right. As soon as we approach the Lincoln Tunnel, a cop pulls up next to us and it was megaphone said, turn the camera off. Cause you know, like by Lincoln Tunnel says like no cameras. Yeah. I never really thought about it before, right? Right. So there's a level of technology in New York that's looking inside of people's cars, figuring out if they're, what they're doing inside of the car and instantly sending cops to pull up right up on you. Definitely 100%. You, you know, see what I'm talking about? Yeah, like, like it's, it's a real big brother eye in the sky kind of yeah, situation. Yeah, definitely there's cameras everywhere. You know, uh, a couple of years, like 10, 15 years ago, it wasn't really like that. 12 mm -hmm. years ago. Oh yeah, the 80s were wild. Yeah. You could right. shoot no, someone. I'm, so, and... I'm talking about the early 2000s. Forget the 80s. Yeah. What, what year are we in now? 2022. Okay, so we're talking 203, 202. 20 years ago. 205. Yep. Forget the 80s. That's the times I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, it's when you guys were coming out. Yeah, so it wasn't really too many cameras. Yep. You just not thinking like that, but it's that far now. It's 20 years later. In 2022, man, I just don't feel that it's worth it to be a criminal anymore. Like, I, I feel like th there's too many things going against you. You see what I'm saying? It's it's so much harder so than, than, than sure, it was before. So what do you before. mean a criminal like and what like being a gang member in the feds and that? Whatever I mean? whatever your crime is, right. there's way more ways to make legal money these days, and it's much harder to make illegal but it's, money. But it's more pressure on a generation. So what I mean by that, my view is of oh, like you got a Mary Jeans alone. Those are like two thousand dollars. You want to get some Dior kicks. Those are like four, fourteen hundred. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to get a, 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 a Michael Mary jacket or whatever. It all costs money. It's, it's a lot more pressure on this generation because they got Instagram. You're seeing everything. Everybody want to live this particular lifestyle. Yeah, but it's pressure they're putting on themselves. Like, you know, because everybody want to feel good about themselves. Like, that's everyone want to feel you, good about themselves. You live a different lifestyle. So you, you, you might feel like that. But to some people, dream is to get that AP or get that car, or get that, you know? Yeah, but look, okay, for example. Because they look at it like, yo, I got one life to live, and that's true. Okay, but like, for example, I, I take more pictures these days, right, with people I interview. Right. And, and I, I like to wear clothes, and I got designer clothes. You know, I got a good number of pieces, but I don't have so many pieces that I could wear a new outfit every single time. So sometimes you'll see the same piece, be like, oh, and Vlad. And that's cool. And like people that. are like, oh, Vlad broke, he wearing the same shit every time. And I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Like, no, they're really saying that. Nah, the people comments. just like fucking with you, Vlad. <laughs> no, but but, but, but I think but I think that that's an overall mentality in people these days. Oh, he must be broke. He wearing the same outfit in two Instagram photos. Like, damn. Like, if you if you buy, but you got money, you could have switched the outfit. That's just you being cheap. You know what I mean? I'm not it's, saying. It's me, it's me and being, trust me, it's me being it's, smart. I'm not it's, saying. I'm not gonna wear. I'm not gonna keep buying outfits just to impress people on Instagram. You see what I'm saying? If I buy. Uh, a Burberry, you know, tracksuit. I'm gonna Vlad, wear it a hundred times. Put your Vlad <laughs> TV to buy one uh, extra outfit. You're just being cheap with yourself, because you can buy an extra outfit. You're out there. You, you know, somebody people look at. So if you're wearing the same shit on two different Instagram posts, yeah, people might say something. Like, damn, Vlad. Yeah, but, but isn't it isn't it silly though? Like, as two grown men talking about this. I now. don't really care. I'm a listen. I'm, I'm gonna wear my shit again. I don't, right. Like, it is what it is. I yeah. don't give a fuck. Exactly. I used to wear the same clothes on the block for days when I was out grinding. So I'm, my, my mentality is totally different. Yeah. You know? But, but, but I'm saying, though, like, at a certain point, you have to act your wage. When, when I mean, I first... yeah, of course, because, of course, I'm not, I'm thinking about Sub-Zero refrigerators and the Wolf stoves. I'm not thinking about Ameri and Balenciaga all the time. Mm -hmm. That's just me. You know what I mean? I like it. I got it. I got Dior. I got Balenciaga. It's cool. You know, but I, I like, I know what you mean. Like, you got nice sneakers, you like it, right? Yep. You got the Kanye's on, those are Kanye's? The Yeezys, yeah. Yeah, you got the Yeezys on, you know what I mean? You like it, that's what you, every time I see you, you got Yeezys, you spend money, it's cool. I don't judge nobody, I don't care, you know what I mean? I know what I like, you know, but I do like Sub-Zero refrigerators and Wolves and KitchenAid refrigerators and, you know, I like stuff like that and Versace. Uh, you know, silverware and stuff like that. I, so, 
it's different stuff for me too that I like too. Yeah, I just think it's, it's too easy to get caught up. At a certain point, when you try to spend the money you don't really have, you know, like in 2002, when you guys were popping, I was broke as shit. You know, yeah. I, I, you know, I'd wear Air Force Ones for months. They'd be dirty and fucked up, but that's all I could afford at the time. Uh, I had a Rolex watch, like a, like a regular date just, like the basic, but the basic shit, one. But, but I, I used to never but, wear it because I'm like, yo, I'm broke right now. Why am I wearing a watch that really... No, but that's, that's how you feel. Like some people can't, you know, some dudes can't have sex when they broke. I know I can't. I'm not thinking about <laughs> a chick if I ain't got no money, you know what I mean? But some dudes can. It's, it's all on how you feel. That's how you felt. Yo, I'm broke. I can't wear this watch. I'm fronting. That's yeah, cool. Right. There's nothing wrong with that. I feel like I can't be chasing chicks if I ain't got my money. I'm like, that don't make no sense. But some dudes would be broke and horny. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> nah, it don't that was add me up. At the so time, that's man. how you that felt. Broke and horny. You felt like, yo, I was broke. I can't wear this watch or I can't wear this chain. And I understand. It's cool. Yeah. To each his own, man. Yeah. Just too easy to get caught up, man. And now when the PPP money... The PPP scam money has run out. I feel like people are fucked up now. I mean, that was a dream, that now. was that was a dream to come from true. Everybody know, right? was like, <laughs> you know, everybody I guess was rich at that time. It was like a dream come true. But some people did the right thing with PPP loan money. Some people actually fed their businesses. So right. I'm talking was, about the scam PPP. Loan. Oh yeah, no, of course the scams. I mean, you know, it is what it is. People had to do what they had to do or felt felt good at that moment. And you know, people I guess will take that risk. That's on them. Yeah, I mean. Baby Blue, who's in prison right now over buying Ferraris with his PPP money. Yeah. Well, Baby Blue Chain was like... Yeah. Well, like, you know, that stuff like that will make you hot. Well, you know, he, just got, like, shot, just he like, got shot over that chain. Yeah, it was, it was, the chain was ridiculous. The chain was ridiculous. And she he... Like, it's like that big. He was hanging out like a bowling alley or something like but, that. You know, thank God he made it. You know what I mean? How do you feel about chains? If someone tries to steal your chain, would you would you lose your life over your chain? Fifty said that. He said, "Don't rob me. Uh, you know I'm down to die for my chain." I feel like in the hood, two things that people always will feel like they would die for is they chain and they name. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Some some I'm not gonna say what I would do, but I'm just saying some people will be like, <laughs> "Take the chain, okay? Don't worry about it. We'll spin back." You know what I'm saying? And some people will actually die for their chain. Yeah. You know, so it depends on the situation and the person. Yeah. And some, you know, and some people that are smart have they shit insured and be like, all right, well, fuck it. But some people will die for their chain. Because where we come from, that's two things that you got to respect. Respect my name and respect my chain. My chain is, you know, that's a piece of me. That's why niggas run around with it like it's a reward. It's all bullshit at the end of the day. It really is. It make yeah. no fucking sense. Yeah. Because it really ain't about a chain. It's about some real estate and all that other shit. You know, so you buy a house before you buy a chain or wasn't get a condo a, before you get a Rolex. You know what I'm saying? Wasn't there a whole situation over Young Buck and his chain? What, in Chicago back in the day? It was Chicago, right? Yeah, that was crazy. Yeah. What happened exactly? It was the G unit spinner. A motherfucker was in Chicago. One of the mother, my man, you know, I don't want to say no names, but one of the dudes, homies, took the chain. He's in Chicago. You know what I mean? And he got caught slipping. You in Chicago with that big ass chain on? I mean, things happen. Right. Merry Christmas. He got the chain back, though. Yeah, that was a, yeah, that's a long story. Yeah, the yeah. chain came back. Well, I, I know about the story. Yeah. We'll just leave it alone, though. Yeah, the chain, <laughs> the chain came back, definitely. <laughs> well, you don't have to comment on this, uh, but we actually broke the story that um, one of the dudes that is charged, you know, basically arrested for killing Jam Master J is also now a suspect in the killing of Stretch. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. Rest you know, Stretch, who was yeah. down Stretch, with Tupac. Tupac, e Money. Yeah, legend. You know about Stretch? Legend. Did you know him personally? No, I didn't know him in person. Like, that's an error before me, but I always heard his name. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I definitely seen e Money bags around in Troy, you know, you know, that was all like the same thing with Stretch. Yeah, Tupac. I remember they said Tupac was at Amazora back in the days. Oh, really? Yeah. Crazy. I've been there yeah. before. Okay, yeah. I mean, because there was always the rumor that. Because Stretch died, I think, like one year after Pac got shot at Quad Studios, and then Pac didn't go to Stretch's funeral. So there was always the rumor that, oh, Pac had Stretch killed and whatever else. And as time is going on, we see more and more that that. Yeah, the feds are super ill. Like, you know, the feds, they, you know what I mean? Ain't no beating them. Yeah, well, this is a fed case, I believe. Yeah, so it's, it's just crazy. Yeah, Rest man. in peace to Stretch. 
I don't know about all that, but yeah, you know. The rest of the piece of Jam Master J as well. Yeah, Jam Master J legend. That's I mean, you know, I feel like we come from that that olive branch. You of know course. I mean, even me, yeah. I mean, that was you know, the first hip hop album, not single, but the first hip hop album that I bought was Run DMC's first album. Definitely. Run DMC, classic. That tape used to pop. Me and my brother, we couldn't leave the porch because, you know, back in the days, you get, we as kids, you might get beat up or robbed for your, for your, for your, your, your stereo. So when I was young, I'm talking about young, like seven, eight years old, we had the, the boom box and had Run DMC tape. It was just crazy. Yeah. And we had Haitian parents. They were strict. They right, were I was going to say, your Haitian parents let you listen to Run yeah, DMC? Haitian, yeah, they, they were strict, man. My moms and pops are strict. Like, having an Allen parent is different than having... <laughs> Americanized or so you know a pair from America it was just just different you know what I mean speaking of Haiti have you heard what's happening right now in Haiti not nah, what's going on well essentially Haiti seems to be running being run by the gangs and there's this gang leader named barbecue mm -hmm. uh, Jimmy barbecue Cherizer Ch Cherizier okay and he essentially is like the big dude there and like the United Nations accusing him of like, you know, stopping food, getting delivered and everything else like that. But uh, it's a mess right now in Haiti. Absolutely. I mean, mess. hopefully, you know, that's where both of my parents are from. Shout out to everybody in Haiti. Shout out to all my zoes. So hopefully we can work out something or try to figure it out because, you know, I'm quite sure it's rough for them out there, you know, after the earthquakes. And it's like it's like kind of every man for themselves out there. And it's tragic that you know, you know, to stopping the food or whatever it is. But I mean, you know, we, we're not there to know what's really going on. We just, you know, hearing, but, you know, hopefully they can get it together because I, I actually never been to Haiti. You never went and back I, to Haiti? I really want to go. We were supposed to go, but when we went, I think that was around the time Clef got shot. So oh. I think we were supposed to have a show out there, but I don't know if it got canceled. Oh, but that was right after the, the, uh, the earthquakes. I think, yeah. So yeah, after Clef was out there yeah. after the earthquakes. Yeah, but I think we were supposed to go out there around that time. Shout out to Cliff, you know, he real G. He was. Yeah, I mean, he ran for president, and uh, actually, it was funny because I interviewed Proz about this. Proz supported the guy who ran against Cliff. That's some and hater. actually won. That's some hater shit right there. Yeah. He goes and runs for president. There was a bunch of other politicians involved. Was it like seventy candidates or something like that? Same as the U.S. Yeah. You know, but. Now, partway through the election, Wyclef starts to run. And uh, so Wyclef is actually running against your candidate. At one point, Wyclef gets eliminated because he wasn't a citizen of Haiti. And I actually interviewed him about this. Do you think that if Wyclef had run, that he would have won? No. No? <laughs> Why is that? Um... The reason, uh, let me just backtrack a little. So, one, uh, at that time, people thought that I was going against Wyclef when I was supporting Michelle Martelli. I wasn't going against Wyclef. Because Wyclef hadn't run yet. Right. We, we didn't know he had plans to run. Yeah. You know. He well, you know. <laughs> that was, nah, that sounds like some hater shit. Probably hater will shit? sound like a hater, yeah. If, if, if we in the same group together, how you going to go? Go with the other guy. That sounds like some hater shit to me. I don't know, man. I yeah. don't know why he did it, but uh, ultimately the, the, the guy... The Fugees was definitely a, um, a classic group, but you know, it was always about, you know, Lauren and Clef. So Proswell, you you know, they looked out for you. So the shit on Clef like that is crazy. Well, I remember on a Math Hoffa mm -hmm. show, you guys were debating about the greatest New York group mm -hmm. of all time. Right. And you, of course, the G-Unit. And I think I didn't say just June though. I said Run DMC. I think I named a couple of groups, huh? Okay, but okay, in terms of of the last twenty years, you said G Unit, and then he said Wu Tang. No, I'm, and, and you know what? You know what's crazy? We got to stop doing top five. We got to start doing like top ten, top twenty, mm -hmm. and we got to start doing different eras. So like that's what people don't understand about hip hop. I understand hip hop. To me, people are trying to to erase the art. You know, this all, I love drill rap, I love R&B, I love all kind of music. My best friend, like I said, DJ Rough Hands, rest in peace to him, was a DJ. So I listen to all genres of music. So my whole thing is, forget top five, you gotta have top ten. 
Because if we go to the 80s, right, what are we going to do? Big Daddy Kane, Slick Rick, mm-hmm. who else? Uh, uh, Rock hold him. on. Rock him. Um, hold on. Who else? Big K- Daddy Kane, K- Slick K-R-S-1. Rick. KRS One, and who gonna put who you gonna? And it's not in no order, but you know, Big Daddy Kane, Rock Kim, Slick Rick, KRS One, and who you who you would say right there by five? Who are we missing? Dougie Fresh, Dougie Fresh, or who? I mean, I don't think you could really take Melly Mel out that equation. That's a little earlier, but still, Melly Mel was a fucking force of nature. Definitely, uh, Chuck D. Definitely, that's definitely yeah. Chuck D is a little bit later. That's more of the late eighties. You see, it gets it No, gets definitely fuzzy. Public Enemy. That's what I'm saying. It could never yeah. be a top five in hip hop. Just top 10s and top 20s. Like, yeah. People be like, who's your top five? That's hard to figure out because we can go on. We can go to Heavy D. We can go to Houdini. We can go to, you know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. you know the 80s was a fun time in hip hop when you had records like Self Destruction. I seen D Nice put that on his page the yeah. other day. Like, nobody's doing records like that. You think all the rappers going to make a song about peace? Yeah, right. I'm not saying I'm not saying it can't happen. Maybe it could. Maybe, but self destruction era, like the '80s era. Well, hip-hop remember was crazy. when, when self destruction came out? There was a West Coast version. We're all in the same gang, right? Which they like had Easy E. Oh, I don't uh, remember Ice that one. T. See, you put me on. I oh, you didn't know about that? that? We all in the same gang. We're all I don't in remember the same that gang. One. Nah. With Easy E, like you know. I, I gotta I gotta listen to that one. See, you put me on. You know your hip hop. You don't, you don't know. Vlad knows hip hop. But you don't know we're all in the same gang. That, nah, was, that was pivotal. I don't I mean, that. that was on your own TV. You know, I remember I was from video. New York. So self destruction. That was like big coming on Video Music Box. Hold on. Who, who's in? We're all in the same gang. Uh, blah, 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 blah. We're all in the same gang was King T, mm-hmm. Def Jeff, Michelle A, Tone Loke, Above the Law, Ice T, Dre, MC wow. Ren, Easy E, JJ Fad, Young MC. Uh, Shock G, wow. Oak Towns three five seven, and MC Hammer. Damn, I mean, I'm, a, I'm, a, I just gotta just give him. You reminded me of it. I just probably forgot that one, but there's a lot of you know legends on that one. Shout out to everybody. See what I'm that. talking about? And, and it was like an anti-violence song. It's like we're all in definitely. The same game. I gotta listen to that. See, you know your hip hop. I know my hip hop. Sometimes you might know more than me, Vlad. I, you know your hip hop. I mean, I'm sure you know more about Queens hip hop yeah, than I do. Yeah, and I know more about West Coast hip hop than you do. Definitely, That's just what it is. But you, well, we all in the same game. I'm gonna check that out for yeah. sure. Well, what do you think about the whole Kyrie Irving situation? Um, for me, one thing I learned about media training, like when I got out of jail, <laughs> and they had like a, they were like Yale's out of control. So media training is always stay away from politics and stay away from religion. That's the first thing they told me. Because there's so much things going on in the world. I think people, you know what I'm saying? Just, I just learned to stay away from that. That's what I learned in media training. You know, and it's not for a reason or no reason, but I don't know. You just got to be careful what you say nowadays because you got freedom of speech. But you got to be careful of what you say. Yeah. And try not uh... to disrespect anybody. I don't care what religion, what color, what race, what creed, just to be humble and don't disrespect anybody, especially when you know you in the limelight and you a star, you know? Well, you're also not an independent entity. You're part of a multi-billion dollar sports team, which is part of an even bigger NBA umbrella. Definitely. And, And this is designed to include everybody. Yeah, and definitely, right. and it's like it's like like me. I stay away from politics and religion because it always seems to be like an argument or something like that. So I learned just stay away from that. Like there's other things. Talk about yourself or talk about what you're going on, and just mm-hmm. keep it moving and handle business. Because we're from New York City. It's a melting pot of people. You know that, right? Mm-hmm. You're Russian, right? Yep. You got Jewish, Russian. You got yeah. I'm, got, I'm Russian Jewish. Yeah, you got yeah. Indian. You got you got black. You got Dominican. You got Puerto Rican. We we got Guyanese. We got Trinidadian, Jamaican, Haitian. We have melting pot of people. That's all I can right. say. So me, I don't disrespect nobody, and I learn to stay humble and just respect the blessings that God gave you, and that's it. Right, right. <laughs> New York is also kind of unique because of the subway. Yeah, right? definitely because. You know why it's unique to me, New York? Because okay. everybody's tough. Like, it, the, you ain't going to meet too many people that are soft That's true. in a city. You might meet a tough Asian, tough Indian, tough Jewish guy, yep. tough Russian guy, tough Irish guy, tough black guy, tough Dominican. Everybody's tough. Nobody's soft. Like, it's, 
there's a lot of people that won't stand for no disrespect because it's New York. Yeah. See, you never sleep. Shout out to the whole NY. Right. But, you know, <laughs> what I was saying, though, is about the subway. What's sort of unique about New York mm-hmm. is that, you know, you don't have to be, you know, it's not just the broke people take the subway. Everyone kind of takes the subway. Everybody takes Business the subway. people yeah. take the subway. Until you hit a certain subway. financial level, like, like I, I, I'll never take the subway ever again in right. life. But I'm saying that up until I hit a certain point, I had to take the subway. And on the subway, everyone is forced to be next to each other. You know, black, white, Asian, Indian, Definitely, whatever. All kind of people. You know, poor, rich, middle class. People right. going to Wall Street are taking the subway, like dudes with suits. And, and I, you're forced and you know to, what? to have and to that's interact what, with them. And look, and that's what's the best thing about New York. It's right. a melting pot of people. Mm-hmm. You know, like, like uh, I, my shout to Scott Lehman, my lawyer, he's Jewish. You know, I got friends that are Italian. I got friends that are Russian. We came up in school in Queens. There was all kind of people in that school. There was Guyanese, Italian. Yeah. I could tell you my my first best friends was uh, Frankie and Ralphie Havine. They was Italian. You know what I mean? So I never look at color. I never look at anything. So I, I wasn't raised like that. Just treat everybody the way you know you should. You want to be treated, and that's it. Yeah, yeah. But but what that's I'm saying it. is like that's why I think you have more. You know, I think better race relations in New York than places like, for example, L.A. You go to L.A. Definitely. There's communities where people don't speak English at all. And mm-hmm. live their whole lives just speaking Spanish or speaking Pakistani or you know what I'm saying? Or, well, that's or cool because they because they all build their communities and they're with their people. Once. Right, right. But it's what I'm cool, saying is, is that you know you don't have as much interaction between the races and people. Where it's like right. a, a car culture as opposed to a public transportation right. culture like New York is. Yeah. So yeah, I mean New, yeah. New York is special, man. This is why yeah, I'm it's always, a special you know, place. You just always love it. You know, it's all kinds of people here. Shout out to everybody in New yeah. York. That's why we're in New York right you now. Know? You know, my main studio is in New Definitely. York. I always, I've had an apartment in New York forever. You know, even though I live in L.A. most of the time. Like, yo, New York is a special place. Come on, bro. City that never sleep, man. Exactly. You already know. Now, what about the whole Kanye thing? What do you mean? Well, Kanye's been dropped by Adidas, Gap, Balenciaga. I mean, I, I, I feel like, you know, I, I stay away from, you know, <laughs> politics and religion. You know, Kanye is, he's who he is. You know what I'm saying? Well... Okay, but but this part here, we all saw the George Floyd tape. Like how, when you saw George Floyd getting killed on camera, how did you feel? I felt bad, like how everybody else felt. As me being a black man in you know United States of America, I felt like how everybody else felt. You know. Okay. Nobody's exempt. All I'm saying to you is that for me, I watch what I say. When you're a public figure. You know, you might not think you're a public figure or you might not think people look up to you of all races and color. But a lot of these dudes got a lot of money, man. They, you know, they can say what they want to say and think you're going to get away with it. We're in times now where people is not with it. You know what I mean? Okay. So you just got to watch what you say. Because like I said, you got freedom of speech, but you just got to watch what you say. I don't want to talk on Kanye or his situation because that's I'm not that type of guy. I don't like talking about other dudes situation. When you look, look, when when the man's been, you know, you see it all, you see what everybody else see. You gotta watch what you say, I guess. <laughs> That's all I get out of that. You know what I mean? You gotta watch what you say. Especially when you're in business with different corporations. I'm quite sure, look, big corporations don't want to get backlash. If if you a person of like a name with Tony Ayo, it's gonna be hard for me to get corporate deals with. I'm Tony Ayer. I might not, you know, I might could shoot for the stars and get it. I might not. But when you really think about it, a lot of dudes get these deals and sometimes you feel like you can say what you want to say, but the big corporation don't want to get the backlash of it. Like if you that if you got a shootout and you got a deal with fucking Pepsi or Coca-Cola, I'm quite sure they're going to drop you. Well, uh, Gilbert Arenas. What? Had a deal with Gatorade or Nike? No, Gilbert Arenas had a deal with Adidas. And he a pulled forty million well, dollar sneaker well, deal. Well, there you go. And then when, there was the gun incident that happened in the locker, in the locker room, room. Everybody right? know about that. Shout out to Gilbert Arenas. Shout out to Gilbert. He's a regular, yeah. regular on my show. I see him on your show all the time. Right? I watch it. Yeah. And and, and we, we talked about this on camera. He broke and he it down. He lost the deal because when he he, he pled guilty to a felony. But he lost the and deal. He, and that was one All of the right, clauses well, in Adidas well, that made him lose go. a $40 so you, million so, dollar so deal. So if you you asking me a question, Vlad, that you're smart enough to know already. You, I don't, I, like, I'm not a clickbait kind of guy. Yeah, yo said this about Kanye. No, my whole thing is you know the answer already. 
If you get caught with a gun in a locker room, you're going to lose a $40 million deal. Yeah. If you get caught with a girl in a hotel, you might lose this kind of deal or this, that, or depending something on, bad. Depending, depending on the situation. On, Just, I mean, she could say something. Okay, so yeah. as you being an artist or being an alum, like, you have to be what? Be careful of what you say, how you move, and what you do. Because there's money on the line all the time, right? Since you're not a West Coast guy, you probably don't know about this. But you know how you've been saying freedom of speech, just watch what you say? Yeah. You know that's actually the title of an Ice-T album? I didn't even know that. And you know, you want to know what the cover looks like? What? Oh, crazy! that's crazy. So it's basically a dude with a bunch of guns in his mouth and his ears. Freedom of speech, just watch what you say. Yeah, just Ice watch what you cover. say. From the, I think it was probably about 91 when it came out or so. I mean, everybody got their opinions, man. Everybody's going to have opinions, but sometimes your opinions maybe should be between you and your friends or you and your circle. Yeah. Maybe not to the to the whole public. Fair enough. Well, you know, I, I'll say I'll, I'll say is. this. You know, when uh, when Kanye said that uh, George Floyd died from fentanyl and the cop's nah, knee wasn't so, really on, on his man, neck, all, I, we, I'm going to say it. Everybody, I, I, I was every, disgusted. No, no, no. Heard. Everybody knows that that's bullshit, though. Yep. You, you, you know I'm going to say the thing every, everybody else saying what they seen. You know, I mean, I'm, listen, I'm from the 90s. We, we got beat up by police and harassed by police so much that, you know, it was something we was used to it. Okay, so you personally, what? have you been beat up by the police? Of course. How many times? I mean, just all the time. Police will chase all you, the time. catch you, beat you up. I done, not me, but I done seen police pull dudes' pants down, grab, work out their ass. Like, it was no, no they disrespect. They would pull down someone's pants. Yes, and, grab, work out their ass. Were like, they wearing gloves at the course, time? Of course, they put the gloves on, <laughs> grab, work out your ass. We talking in the 90s. Police rough you up, beat you up. You had them on mountain bikes. Some of them was tough. Some of them, you know, you know you can get over on it. Because when we used to hustle, we didn't care about beat walkers or nothing like that. They'll be out there. Okay, so you personally, the worst, huh? the worst situation with the police. Tell me about it. I mean, when I got chased, I had a, a gun on me. Something just happened in the area. I had a gun on me, and police chased me, and they just beat me up in the back seat, beat me up in the precinct. A little okay, bit. so they threw you in the back seat. Yeah. Were you handcuffed? Of course. So your but hands are behind your me, back. When they caught me, you know they rough you up. Well, batons. Not with their hands, feet, whatever. I can't remember. It's just, you know. Okay, so they beat you, you up. You just used to, you, that was just something like, we. it's not like we, we lived in an area where we don't see police. We see police every day. They know who he was, probably first name, everything. Like, yo, or know your code name or whatever it is. So we used to them harassing us, throwing us against the wall. Yo, try to see, check, check stashes. I don't want to blow up any stashes, but check stashes. Pull dudes' pants down, embarrass dudes, rough dudes up. That was like everyday process on the block. It was just another day at the office. And I don't glorify it. I'm just telling you how it was. So police, I think with the interaction with police, stuff been happening. It's just now there's more cameras where you could see it. Those body cams But come now. on, we know what there's, Kanye there's, said about... People standing around with... But we yeah. know what Kanye said about George Floyd was some bullshit. You know I'm going to say that. Right. Come on, we all seen what happened. And rest in peace to George Floyd and his family. But, you know, I don't like to even bring that hurt back up to people's family and stuff like that because I'm yeah. not that type of guy, you know. Well, uh, one thing I noticed, and I think that Mathoff even used this at the beginning of his interview, because it's funny, right? When the two of you did the interview, right. me and Math talked afterwards. Right. And he said, uh, I don't think I'm going to put it out. Yeah, he told me. And that. I'm like, he told me that too. Over yeah, I'm like, I'm like, you should, you should put it out. And you know what I told him? I said it's going to be one of the best interviews you ever have, and it's yeah. going to do one of the, the best numbers. Yeah, because it, it was raw. Now, when you look at the show, you see dudes arguing on there. You see it's raw. You see his actual emotion in there. Hein again and Esco left. I don't, I'm not. Everybody's like in my comments. Yeah, yo, it's because of you. I'm like, it ain't because of me. But yeah, I, that know, was a little weird I, when I heard I, that. I love that interview. And I love that, you know, Hoffa let me on his platform. His platform is growing. Shout out to him. And it's it's a big platform as well as, like, being on your platform. You know, I feel like he's growing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, the interview went worldwide. You know, when I go overseas, Vlad interview, Hoffa interview. So shout out to him and his platform. But I felt like um, it, was a, it, it was just, I felt like we was in the hood. Well, you were in the hood. I felt we was drinking at Branson. <laughs> you were, you yeah, were, Harlem. I mean, you know, he, he shoots no, but what I'm a, saying a barbershop like, in Harlem. Yeah, we in a barbershop, we in Harlem, so it felt like we was in the hood. Sometimes I felt like bigger, felt like I'm glorified. Nah, I'm not. 
everybody know I'm one of the humblest ones out of uh, G Unit. So I'm just telling you my experiences, like me going to Greece or me me uh, me going to Switzerland or somewhere like that. That I never thought that I'd have the chance to leave the block. So I feel like, yo, thank God that he gave me a chance to see other places in the world. Well, I just want you to see the other places through me to realize that the block is bigger than the world. And some people be like, yo, can we afford these trips? You can. All you have to do is book it ahead of time. Because when a promoter books us overseas, they book the tickets way ahead of time. So everything is a little bit cheaper. You might not be in a top star hotel. You might be in a good hotel, but... It's cool. You're in Greece. You're in Athens. You just booked it ahead of time. So it's affordable. Also, Vlad, I got a question for you. I know you you know you're half Jewish, half Russian. How do you feel about um Brittany Griner situation? Now she's going to the, the camp. Forced labor camp. And that's crazy. Yeah, her lawyers actually don't even know where she is now. Uh you know, because her appeal got denied. And she was sentenced to nine years. It's crazy. Man. Uh I think that she's a political prisoner or a political pawn. However, you want to really, you know, say it. So you I mean, think it's like a, said, you know, so you think wrote, it's a bad situation? You being Russian, I think it's a horrible situation. Okay. But I'm also, you know, I'm also pro Ukraine. You know, there's a Ukrainian flag in my Twitter profile because I was born in the Ukraine, in Kiev, actually, the capital of Ukraine, when right. it was part of the USSR. Wow. Uh, so, so I don't agree with the Russian invasion. I don't agree with what Putin's doing. Yeah. Saying this probably will prevent me from coming back to Russia. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just because of how big the platform is. Yeah. But, yeah, no, I'm against it. I mean, it. anything where, you know, kids and innocent people dying, I just think it's not good. It's fucked you know, up. It could, be, it could be resolved, you know? Yeah, and, and the thing of it is... But, with her that, with, but, but back to Brittany yeah, her, with the pen to do nine years just for... It's, it's insane. And I remember we had, you know, Fredro Starr on our show, and he said that when Onyx would go over to Russia, they would smoke weed all the time. Totally legal in, in America, and it's totally, totally legal... In a lot of states in America, Russia is just not one of those places. But I will tell you this. There's weed in Russia. <laughs> <laughs> so it ain't, I mean, it's like, it can't be that serious because it's not like, uh, where, where, where you go? Mongolia. You go to Mongolia, you just catch your smoke weed niggas to chop your fucking neck off type shit. Like, it's different. Russia is different. Russia's hip, they got hip hop, they got weed growers. I'm gonna keep it real, like, niggas is growing trees, they got weed out there, they got shit. Right. Real shit. Indoor. <laughs> Popping. <laughs> I smoke mad weed in Russia. Every time I go there. Better than Cali. No, I'm quite. I'm quite sure. Um, I smoked in Russia. You before. smoked weed in Russia. It's but, not. But, a but big I would tell deal. you, I would, it's not a I, nine years big I, deal. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it now. Right now, if you say, and I wouldn't no, want right. to go there. Now, no. if you said Saudi Arabia, then I'm like, okay, I get it. You shouldn't be fucking around in Saudi Arabia, right? They'll, their their but laws you, are very But you never know. Russia. But I just feel like uh, it's it's. I just wanted to ask you because that's a sad situation. No, it's, that it's she's a horrible going situation. To, uh, actual reform. I could just imagine how cold it is in Russia. What they having to do there. Yeah. Like the outlook of how it looks, it's a, uh, like a camp. Like it's probably terrible. The well, food. But, but you, you know, one thing I didn't realize. And the realize, stress alone, man. Free, yeah. that, free that girl, man. Yeah, well, free her. And what I never realized until I started speaking to some of the basketball players that come on my show is that she's essentially the Michael Jordan of Russia. She is a huge celebrity over there. Huge. She's like the biggest basketball player who plays in Russia. That's wild. You see That's what crazy. I'm saying? Whereas over here, she's just another WNBA player. Which is why she goes over there and gets like two million a year. Nine years for a cannabis pen? For a, for a vape pen. That's crazy. I'm going well, to stay in America. I got my strain coming soon. I look out for that. My strain coming soon. <laughs> Don't take soon. it to Russia. Passport Don't boys. take it to Russia. Oh, no. Nah, I'm not here. going to Russia no time soon. Yeah. Now, it's, it's, it's fucked good. up. And I think that, and from what I understand, there's supposed to be a, a, a prisoner exchange because there's this guy that America locked up called the Yo, listen. War, the all I know is they sending her to that camp. I've seen that in mm -hmm. the headlines, I think today or yep. yesterday. And to me, that's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Y'all gonna have her in a camp. She gonna, from the stress alone, could stress her out. Yeah. Imagine how that camp look. We talking Russia, another country. Yeah, but- You know how cold it is out there alone? I know, I was, I was born out there. But the, the thing of it is though, is that, and, and this might happen, based on the way the Russian uh, jail system is set up, 
uh, people with specific skills could potentially get essentially like, you know, a, a work program while they're locked up. Like they spend the night in jail, then during the day they go work Brother, somewhere. Brother, it's just totally She, might, she might end up coaching basketball in Russia. Well, because she's that big of a deal over there. Well, it's, well, I hope I hope it works out for her. So, sad too. situation over a cannabis ban. Don't go to Russia. No, but, no. You no. Know, but, but there's still players that are going over there. Like, like, and this and this says a lot. That well, there, there's American there, players don't. that are going to Russia because they need the. Because now Russia's paying like twice what they used to pay. So, so guys and girls who need the I'm, money are still going I'm, over I'm there and risking their freedom. I'm good on that because one, on that one mistake, you could jaywalk and they could be like, put him in Russian jail. Nah, I'm good. Nine years. <laughs> yeah. For jaywalking. Yeah. Fuck that. What I wanted to say about the, the Math Hoffa interview is that yeah. Math accused you of not having the same energy with him that you do with me. And I don't agree with that. Clearly, people don't remember the whole shut the what? fuck up <laughs> in our first interview. With... Motherfucking uh, 50 crutches got, and 50 shit. 50 was... got stabbed that day, right? He didn't get stabbed, Vlad, right? shut the fuck up with that shit. Bro. Okay. You fucking The know. toy? You fucking You thought dumb. that was a great film? You shut the fuck up. You, you Yo, for idiot, real, bro. you thought the toy. You don't know nothing, Vlad. What the fuck you talking about, Vlad? <laughs> you fucking up, Vlad. I'm fucking up? You're fucking up. Game, a gamer's gonna come looking for you. Oh, yeah. Don't you understand how real video games <laughs> is? You know, I mean, how you got mad at me over the, how, the video how, game Listen, comments. every, every, uh, same energy, some, maybe it's a more laid back setting. When it was there, when we was there, I waited for Hoffa to come there. We was drinking, we was smoking big California blunts. We was chilling. I don't feel like it was no shift in energy. Yeah. Like I, I, I don't know what Hoffa's talking about with that one. He, he's my guy. We, we made history. Um, it wasn't no disrespect to him or me, but sometimes when you know when you ask questions like about the game, the game, the game. Sometimes you don't want to. You want to refrain from talking about stuff like that on the internet or talking about the next man. You know what I mean? If he ain't talking about me, I ain't talking about him. You know, I don't like putting that energy out there talking about the next man. Cause when I wake up in the morning, I'm not thinking about what the next man's doing like you. You're not thinking about what anybody else is doing. You gotta take care of your family, your bills, whatever you have going on. And, and, and that's how I grew up. So when he kept saying the game, the game, and then yo, how about six nine? I'm like, yo, I don't wanna, Talk about that. Yeah. Well, speaking of you, mm -hmm. there was a clip that came out recently mm -hmm. uh, with you and 50 on the private jet. Mm -hmm. And he was talking about a shootout <laughs> that you guys got into. Oh, yeah. And how you were like running yeah, and definitely. shooting at the same time. I, I remember me being on one knee. So <laughs> I could talk about it now. It ain't no statute of limitations. It was just something on the block. A little shootout. Things right. happen. Changed my lifestyle. Though. I'm good. No more of that. Yeah. It's kind of interesting the way he told it. I mean, he said that you were kind of running and shooting behind you. <laughs> Do you know the story that he's talking about? Yeah. It was, you know, it was just hood shit, man. It wasn't nothing crazy. Nah? Yeah. So you go, that situation. What? Did anything happen over that? Or oh, no. Nah, it, it was just regular shootout. Nobody hit. Wasn't that big, and that's that. Yeah, I was that. Uh, you said that you can't show emotions around Fifty Cent. That if you act scared, I mean, you're I feel like you can't show emotions around a lot of people now these days. Not just him, just people in general. When you walk in the streets of New York City, you can't show emotions when you in the Bronx or in Brooklyn or in Queens. You know what I'm just saying? It's just, you know. There's more, you feel like there's more nice people or bad people? There's more nice people. You think so? I think I, so. I would hope so too. I think so. Yeah. But, I mean, you know. I, well, you know. I, I think, think when I you think come back, comes... when you come back to New York, like say I come back from overseas like I came back, as soon as I came back I had an argument because this guy, he had like mad bags and he's, I'm, I'm calling, you know, the driver to see where he's at. I'm tired. He got mad bags, he's pushing it in. He's an Irish dude. Hmm. So like when he's pushing it in, he acts like he don't see me. Don't act like you don't see the black man standing here. I'm tired too. I got bags with me, you know what I'm saying? I got three bags, I'm tired as hell. I'm just coming off a 10 hour, 10 hour, a flight from, we flew from, what was the last place? From Finland to London, 
from London to um, New York. So I'm tired, bro. He's pushing his bags like he don't see me. Don't act like you don't see the black man sitting like I'm here, bro. I'm like, yo, you brushing into me, man. Just chill out. He like, yo, what, what, what? So he get loud, I get loud. What the fuck you talking about? We all going back and forth. Yo, shut the fuck up. And like, I'm getting crazy with him. Like, I had to get crazy, you know what I'm saying? I got crazy with him, man. You know, he ended up backing off the elevator and it's like, cool. I'm like, yo, fuck that. Don't act like you don't see me. That's one thing I don't like when people are disrespectful. I'm like, disrespectful guy. A respectful guy. If, uh, sometimes if I hold a door for you and you don't say thank you, I might have to remind your ass. Like, yo, I just held the door for you. Oh, you're thank welcome. you. Yeah, you're welcome, motherfucker. It's New York City. That's how it is. That's how we grew up. Yeah. I, I don't know, though. I, that's I, I why, feel... when you think about it, that's why we're so standoffish when we go other places. When we go, you notice with G-Unit, when we go other places, we're not really in the mix with everybody like that. You nah, can't. Nah, Never. Nah, not at all. But I, you really the... think that there's more... What? Bad people than good people? No, I don't think it's bad people. I just feel like it's New York and it's just the energy in New York is just going to always be. It's New York. If you get disrespectful, somebody going to disrespect you. That's it. We From a place of respect. A place the city that don't sleep. So it's just New York energy. You know, he's pushing the bags. He might not have been from New York. Yeah. He sounded like he was Irish or something or from somewhere else. But, you know, he's in New York now. It's different energy now. When I'm overseas, the energy overseas is, you know, they got bells. When you're in Munich, you hear bells. You be in your room, beep, beep, beep. You hear bells all over and shit. It's a whole different vibe out there. But when you come back, it's that New York energy. I love it, you know? But like I said, I had an argument in the airport. I mean, were there, you know, when G-Unit was, was first getting up and running and, and you guys huh? were establishing yourselves? Huh? And... You know, I, I remember you would come into G Unit offices. You know, when I was still doing DVDs, you'd mm -hmm. come in, you'd take your jacket off, you'd have a bulletproof vest on, take the shit off. Yeah. You know, people were armed in the office. Was there a situation where G Unit employees, not the rappers themselves, but other employees, were like, "Man, I can't take this shit. Like, this is just too much." Oh, it was all the time, but like a lot of employees got used to it. Hmm. Like I don't see. Um, I remember when the gunplay situation happened. And we had a couple of um, ladies that worked in the office. You know, one lady name was Nikki, and Nikki, uh, like, they walked right over gunplay. They was used to it. Like, you'd be on the phone, somebody's getting beat down. It's just, you just used to it. <laughs> you know, things happen, you know. Like, you might run up on the wrong artist and his security, like, that. Oh, that's everyday shit, not just with us. Yeah. You run up on the wrong artist, security will baffle your ass up or run up on stage and. Your ass gets suplexed off the stage. I mean, it's just, you know, it's just how the game is. You know what I mean? Speaking of a G unit, uh, one of our uh, YouTube members, Robbie Santana, actually brought up an interesting question for you. What would you say are the top five G unit member solo albums, excluding 50 Cent? The top five. G unit solo albums solo solo of course i'm gonna say thoughts of a predicate felon was my album that's number one i had some hits on it so seductive i know you don't yep. love me i i had some sh them records still play i'm gonna say hunger for more Lo what um banks okay that's two what was game album the documentary documentary um the documentary so you would put hunger for more over documentary yeah okay I'll put hunger more over the documentary. Okay, that's three. Why do you think that's fucked up? Because I'm cool. No, I'm not saying I'm it's too cool. No, I'm not. I'm not saying it's fucked up. It's just uh, I'm just saying hunger for more know, came me, out. Me personally, I'll put the documentary over the hunger for more, but but that's just my personal preference. You think you for real? Yeah. I mean, that's your opinion. Everybody got opinion. That's my opinion. You I know, like. I, I, mean, I, think, I mean, I think that uh, when the banks hunger came for more with a, when banks came with when we came with Uno, those dress maybe because I was more and I was on a documentary too. Right. Running was. Definitely a fire record game put me on. I can't even lie. Game shit was fire, but it's just Banks came first. And Banks, you know, he had, you know, of course, ain't no click. He had, you know, the joint. If you my nigga, we could ride to the end. Well, when Nate dog, you know, his shit was, he, his shit came out first. Mm -hmm. Really, there's really no order. I'm just telling you the top five. Wait, there's give there's really no order. Thoughts of a really? Because it seemed like look, you were ordering. I mean, no, we, you, I wasn't, just, you told me you no, put, you put I, Lloyd no, Banks over the no, game out. No, 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 no. But look, let's not even put an order. Let's just give the, t the top five. Ah, Thoughts okay. of a Predicate, um, Hunger for More, Documentary, 
What was Buck's first album? Straight Out of Cashville? I believe so, yeah. Straight Out of Cashville and the um, Beg for Mercy album. Well, Beg for Mercy is a group album. Yeah, but it was a G Unit album. Right, I was saying the solo albums. Oh, well, uh, after that, what is it? What's after that? I don't know. I don't know. I guess we're kind of running out of so, I mean, yeah, so much shit we got. I don't know. Okay. But I'll put top five G Unit shit without kind of like 50, but 50's kind of on that. Okay. I'll put Beg for Mercy there, because, you know. Beg for Mercy is the first G Unit. I did about two million. Out. Yeah, I yeah. Did, did about two million. Okay. But fair enough. Uh, on Math Hoffa's show, you know, when he asked what well, some of the craziest uh, situations you guys have been in, mm -hmm. and this is a story I never heard about. It was the filming of the 50 Cent and Akon I'll Still Kill video. Oh. On the paperwork, and uh, henchmen and them were supposed to come through, and I guess they gun jammed, but we had God on that side, and they backed out on the hit, but we had straps too, and that really was really it. You said they had silencers? Yeah. And this was part of the, the actual report that came out? Yeah. Okay, and I guess you said that they accidentally let like off. it's all you can find all this like it's all yeah it's all, it's out, all the it's paperwork all, yeah, so people. you're saying that they showed up and they nobody shot. nobody seen them they so called was following a car I don't know which car because there was like three four different cars mm -hmm. and every car you know nobody was really traveling light so if you if you would have shot you know somebody would I'm quite sure somebody would have shot back but you got a silencer so that would probably give you the up but I guess they didn't know how to handle a weapon or something like that it's in the paperwork. And the gun went off in the car. So as the gun went off in the car, I guess it jammed and they backed out of what they wanted to do. So, you know, God is good. I guess God was on our side at that time. But, or they didn't know how to handle what they had. Some people don't know how to handle the strap right. How did you guys get this paperwork? What do you mean? It's all over the internet. It's everywhere. No, but I'm saying like, like at what point did it come out? Because I'm sure it didn't come out like It the came next out, day. that came out years ago. So years later. Yeah, that, that, that's been out. Okay. When, when you like saw... when you look at with, like like a lot of people, you, you know that's why I don't try to glorify the street shit, cause niggas would be like, yo, well who told on them or niggas be telling or, nah, every shooter that henchman had told on him. Like his driver when he shot up the crib, he told on him. Teflon, all You're his people, about your house, yeah, when God all shot his him. people told on him. Everybody that he had do dirt with him, told on him. So people. Glorify the street shit and make the street shit like, nah, the thing is, the best thing is to make your money and get out the streets. Fly the world, live your life, you know, take care of your kids, take care of your girl, your whoever, whatever you have going on. Take care of yourself. Because at the end of the day, all his shooters told on him. So you might have niggas around that shooters, those be the same shooters to tell on you. You better off probably doing the shit by yourself. So everybody glorify this shit, I'll crash out on this. Well, then crash out. Cause you're gonna be in the feds, B. That's it. If that's how you feel, then crash out. If a nigga feel like he gonna crash, you should have crashed out already, nigga. If that's your mindset, yo, I'll crash out any minute. You should have, you shouldn't even be in the streets. You should be in the feds already. Y'all crash out right now. I don't give a fuck. I mean, when you found out years later that mm -hmm. there was essentially a hit, a potential hit that could have happened in your vicinity, and you probably would have been one of the main targets. Yeah, definitely, but I mean that's that's what I chose. Like I said, Fifth is my man, and I don't I don't want to you know bring Fifth up all the time in every interview. Shout out to him, but I don't you know I want to talk about me and you know you putting my trail out to my new podcast. Welcome to the culture, or or or, or my weed strand coming. Shout out to We Work and Burner, Passport Boys, or or uh, um the, the the movies coming and and the books. I want to talk about that, but. When you talk about that, that's all out there. You know, the gun jammed, I guess they backed out the head. God is good, you know? What was interesting, I never really knew this, was that G-Unit, and you said this, that G-Unit inherited the Jimmy Henchman beef because of Chris Lighty. Of course. And you guys were managed by Chris Lighty, and I guess Chris Lighty and Jimmy never got along. You think, you think Chris Lighty would have been sticking his chest up like this if it wasn't for us being around? Not saying he was a punk. He, well, listen, that, well, look, 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 listen. Chris Lighty had a, has a no, background. No, no, no. I know he has a background, a tunnel, and he doesn't see niggas get thrown through the tunnel windows. But now you got 50 Cent of G unit around you, niggas that's ready to, you know, at that point when niggas ain't had no consequential thinking. So at that point, it's like 
Fifth is the type of nigga to be like, fuck henchmen. So if he got that energy around, fuck henchmen, Chris like, yeah, fuck henchmen. Not saying he wouldn't did it if we wasn't around, but he had that energy around where niggas was like, fuck him. Like, I done been backstage. Fifth, don't even say nothing to henchmen. Niggas like that feel like they, you know, deserve respect because they OGs of what you put in, put in in the street. And every OG feel like that. But at the end of the day, these young niggas don't give a fuck about what I did back in the days. We all get older and nigga will be like, well, I don't give a fuck about yeah, yo. And I'm aware of that. So I move away a certain way I move. Some young niggas might not want to hear shit. Yeah, I mean, listen. And I, mean, I understand. And it's cool because there was a point where we didn't want to hear shit. It's cool. The tables turn. That's just how life is. But I'm just telling you is that niggas always ran around like, fuck niggas. Like, it is what it is. And it's better to be in your little circle. You live longer like that. You ain't got to, you know, the grass is cut low. You can see the snakes. Mm. Keep your circle small. You don't need a whole entourage of niggas that potentially want to line you up or or fuck your girl or your baby mother or want your shine or want to be like you. Or Some people are like that. Some people around are not your friends. They're opportunists. Some people are friends. Some people were opportunists. Did I ever tell you the day that I met 50 Cent? No. Interesting. Was it at this it, 50.com? It, it, no, it wasn't. It wasn't. So what had happened was when Game was about to drop his first album, mm -hmm. I was around uh, New Jersey Devil, who was Game's, you know, one of Game's yeah, right yeah, hand yeah, man. Yeah, I remember him. You know, he basically brought me in and mm -hmm. we decided to do a mixtape and a DVD. That was actually my first ever DVD. Okay. Uh, it was it was um, called the I Devil's Advocate. Go ahead. I'm listening. Right? So I was basically running around with game. I was going to Compton. I was go go, and I was in New York, and I was filming sort of, kind of like him prepping to his first album. Right. And in in Manhattan at a rehearsal space, Game and Fifty were gonna perform on MTV that night. Okay. So they were rehearsing their song together. So it had to be how we do. No? How we do. Yeah, that's what we do. How we yeah. do. Exactly. It was, it was how we do. Yeah. So, you know, I'm there. Games Entourage is there. 50 is there with like a bodyguard and like a, you know, some label people and so forth. And they're rehearsing how we do together. Yeah. A bodyguard or a shooter? I don't know. All right. Maybe both. No, I'm only fucking <laughs> Take that back. Maybe jump. both. So, so we're all quietly sitting around. I had never met 50 before ever, right? Well. At the point that they finish, you know, game goes to the corner to like smoke a blunt or whatever. And I'm always going to remember this. 50 went around the room and to every single person, walked up to every person and said, how you doing? My name is 50 Cent. And he shook everyone's hand. Well, Must know, have been like 20 people. Well, and everyone knew who 50 well, was. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, you know what? I don't want to keep it on 50. I want to talk about me. But 50, is, that's how, that wasn't I here before you earlier? Wasn't I here before you? Yeah. Well, there you go. That's where I learned from. Yeah, I, I was just saying, like, to, to see to see the professional, the professionalism, and also the politeness. You I, mean, know I mean, a lot of people when we on movie sets, like we was in a movie set in Bulgaria, and we we was running around, and they see how professional we are. Like, we'll be there early. We're actually quiet on the set because people think you know you're gonna be uh, yelling and screaming, or you're gonna be loud because you're just some loud black guys, you know. And sometimes. You know, sometimes we bug out, we get carried away. You know what I'm saying? Somebody, but they, you, and, and look, this happened with us overseas. It's me, Murder, my man Light, Devon. It's a whole bunch of us for breakfast. And you know, sometimes we just talking in our element, like New York. And my nigga, my nigga, my nigga, my nigga, Murder kept, my nigga, my nigga, my nigga. And I'm like, I'm like, yo, Murder, we gotta kinda chill a little bit because you know, all these people are looking at us crazy. But sometimes, you know, you just, we, we being our character. But sometimes, you know, it's an off and on switch, you know? But for breakfast, you know, we was wilding. Yo, my nigga, sometimes we forget we be saying it so much. And then I be like, yo, Merc, we bugging. We got to stop saying my nigga like that. Or loud as shit. Yeah, man, next look. thing you know, the day, next day for breakfast, they putting us in the back. <laughs> I us in the back. It's cool. It's like, fuck it. You got to eat your caviar pancakes yeah. back there today. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes, no, like we get said, a little, sometimes we get a little too hoodie, but you got to turn hoodie. the hoodie. The hoodie um, switch off, you know, because yeah. they be having fun, like being on tour with uh, Murder. It be me, Murder, and Fifty's Barber. Shout to Light the Barber, and um, we just be chilling, man. Like it, 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 we be having a good time, you know. Just breakfast in the morning, Four Seasons Hotel. We at the Armani Hotel. 
We in the best hotels in the world. And like I said, like half of them said, yo, he was, nah, it's not bragging. It's you letting people see that you could fulfill your dreams too. God put me in a position to see all this stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like I never thought I was going to be in a Monty Hotel and, in, in in Milan, yeah, or I've eaten there. Or, it's real, real or nice. being the Four real Seasons, nice. or being the Four Seasons in Greece, or or being in Budapest, the Ritz Carlton. You know what I'm saying? Like it was a lot of stuff that Hoffa said he expect me to. Grow. Oh, yo, the food is is trash overseas, bro. I'm in the best hotels yeah. in the world. <laughs> That's why I said the smack thing, joking with him, you know. But I'm like, yo, I'm with you know. It's G unit. Well, yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but but I just want to say, like, you yeah. know, I just want to say that 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 first meeting sort of just impressed upon me, like, okay. Definitely. Like, like th- this dude is not like the image that he has. Yeah. Once the lights get turned off, you actually see a professional, polite person. Because you don't know who you're gonna never, piss off listen, by not shaking I've their hand. I've been I've never been late for a flight because the smartest thing that I learned, our office used to do was they'll tell you to be there at four o'clock when everything don't really start till 6.30. Hmm. So if you know an artist, if you got an artist and you know they're gonna be late, cause they're always late. Yeah. You so know tell them I mean? to come early. Yep, tell them to come early. Yo, yeah. we, we're starting at, at um, two o'clock, but it really start at five. Yep. So what their trick was, the industry trick, that's always smart. You know, I know shout out to all the labels. And, <laughs> let me stop giving out shout outs now. <laughs> Every, all the labels that know this trick, because G-Unit was familiar doing it, Violator was familiar doing it, Chris Lighty and them. They'll tell you to come there at five, uh, uh, two, two o'clock, and everything don't start till five. But they'll have food out there for you, beverages. You know, you might go take your smoke, smoke some bud, relax, and then next thing you know, two hours go by. So it makes sense, and yeah. that's how I learned to always come early, because yeah. we always was early, because they always lied about the time, which was smart. Well, you said something on a uh, math show. Uh-huh. You said. Uh, you think the game should apologize to 50 and Eminem and Young Buck should apologize to 50 so you guys can go and get $40 million? Yeah, I, I don't want to talk about that. But it's the truth. I mean, you know, we could always, it's always the possibility to go out and tour and get money. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't hold grudges, you know what I'm saying? But there's always, you know, the opportunity for us to go out and tour on our own and make the money. It's all about the money, ain't it? Right? You, Lloyd Banks, and Game doing a tour together with the three of y'all would pack it out. It, w- it would, would be pack it out. It the be, three of y'all, just because of the the history and everything else like that. I mean, and, and look, man, and look, like yeah, because I don't like to get on these platforms and disrespect. Because you know, dudes got kids and families, and we did yeah. that already. It's like we moved on. We was in the era. Where we, Yo, fuck niggas, fuck your moms. And we was in that era already. Now we grown. So to me, it's all about the money and taking care of kids and kids in college and grown now. We grown. So it don't make sense to me. You never see me really get out of line on the internet, have you? True. I don't really get on the line. I don't like to talk people business. I don't like to critique people. You know what I'm saying? Because that's your business. It's not my business. And I'm going to stand on what I stand on. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So with me, it's, it's all business. You know, my mistake in this game was thinking that people was my friends when they wasn't. Mm. Yeah. That was my biggest mistake. That's my biggest mistake, when, too. Yeah. That is my <laughs> biggest mistake, too. Thinking people was my too. friends when yep. I realized, yo, you know what? Just this shit is all fucking business. Yeah. So don't put your emotions into it. Because once you put your emotions into it, you're fucked up, you're depressed, you're trying to figure out how you're going to get back on. Your, your, your people that was all taking your money, now they, they judging you, they trying to tell you what to do. They don't know nothing about hip hop, they don't know nothing about the industry. Trust me, I know. Because when the roller coaster is going up, there's only one way it go down. Baby, and you see who's gonna be there for you when it go down. Yeah. I done gave niggas jewelry, niggas done crashed my cars, niggas done had bitches in my crib. Wait, wait. Look, you, hold who, on. Who, who, Let me they, keep going. Okay. Go I ahead. done gave niggas jewelry, niggas done bought my cars, crashed my cars, some of them have license. Um, niggas fuck bitches, mansions, condos, flew niggas around the world. Some of the niggas that flew to Africa and Germany don't even call me to just be like, yo, how you doing? And it's cool, you don't wake up and you don't think about that, you just remember it. Because when the roller coaster's going up, everybody's your friend. Everybody loves you. Everybody this. But when the roller coaster's going down, gee, you not. Oh, he needs to do this. He needs to do that. Da, oh, what? Da, 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 da. Da, what? 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 And it's cool. And I believe every artist at a point gets to that point where the roller coaster goes up and the fucking hate train starts to come. Not only from 
friends, family, but it comes a lot from the media too. Yeah, I mean, looks because media do a lot of you know y'all oh, y'all yeah. play a lot of judge like absolutely y'all y'all could say somebody shit is mediocre and somebody might really listen to that. Yeah. So you got to be careful on what you do to artists. Because if we was drug dealers, think about it. If this was cartel, like bloggers would be getting hit. Well, the cartel kills. Journalists. Yeah, they kill like that's media. That's shit. Imagine if the rap game was like that. I mean, shit. I mean, it, it is to you a put out, degree. You put, put out a fucked up story and you get clipped. That shit would be crazy. But we not, I'm just saying, hypothetically. But you know what I mean? It's real. It gets real like that. It's like that with the cartel. Yeah. I'm just telling you. So it's like, you know, the media controls a lot of shit, man. Well, when you talk about getting over beef, we are actually doing a podcast now. The first episode is out on yeah. Vlad TV with Saigon and Havoc oh, of definitely. Mob D. Yeah. Now, for those that don't know, they had like a 15 Because that Was beef. that beef? That beef was over uh, True Life. Shout out to True Life. Right. Okay. So here's, here's the whole story. It was for, True. No, I remember that. Yeah. It was True Life right. and Saigon and I think some were Prodigy. And uh, okay. So uh, I'll tell the whole story because they actually talk about it on the show, right? And this is, and this right. is common knowledge. Mm-hmm. It really started back that True Life had bought a verse from Prodigy, right? Okay. Prodigy gave him the verse. And it was the verse was on something else. Yeah, the verse ended up showing up on the soundtrack. I think I heard that, yeah, it was on something else. Pro, uh, True Life wanted to get his money back well, or Prodigy a new verse. Pro, but he didn't, try to, he didn't want to give him a new Prodigy verse. Rest never, in peace, Prodigy. N- never he never it. wanted to give him a new verse? Never wanted to give him a new verse. Well, ne- you know, never wanted to give him the you money know back. On, on rest in peace to Prodigy, rest but on his behalf, Prodigy. sometimes Prodigy was so much of a dope MC. He's like one of the best rappers from New New York City, lyrically. Um, he probably forgot he gave him the verse. The verse that he probably gave it to him and probably put it on the soundtrack. He yeah. could have, he could have like mistake. Not saying he did it. He could have did it purposely. Who I don't want to talk unto him. Rest in peace, prodigy. But who who, who but, knows what happened? But who knows what happens? But yeah, I remember happened. that but, beef. But then the next that was step, DVD time. That was the DVD era. Yeah. Right? That was beef DVD. Because wasn't it wasn't it. True Life and them burning something? Uh, was it a Mob Deep flag or something? Well, no, they actually they was burning something. They they went and bust into a studio that Mob Deep affiliates were at and ended up pistol whipping him. Oh, we talking too much. You talking? Well, no, but this is out on the beef DVD. This is this is common knowledge. But this is, this is not inside. So you've seen them doing it. That's on the DVD. They talk about it. True Life talks about oh, it. Oh, oh shit! All right. Well, yeah. Fuck it. No, no. This is no. This is out there. Nah, this is but out you know I don't want people. No, to no, call no, you no. The there's no Vlad's not the police. <laughs> Pop in beef DVD and watch it. All right, it was there. And, it was and there. watch it. Yeah, it right. Was there. It was there. It was you know there. when when True Life was talking about his man bust off a gun in public, like it was. Right. It, right True right. Life is a you know it's kind of crazy. Yeah. Saigon was super close friends with True Life. Yeah, yeah, they had records together. Yes, but they but, but they had a real friendship. And that's like how it, Mob Deep. So fast forward. That's how fast Mob forward. Deep. Saigon was in SOBs with Mob Deep. You know. Uh, oh yeah, I remember on stage. You know, uh, Prodigy, up. I think, told him to suck his dick. Yeah. Saigon punched him, and then all and then Saigon ran. All hell broke loose. Everything else like that. Havoc his partners with. You know, prodigy. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, so there was this long-lasting sort of yeah, beef. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that beef. One. I remember it was DVD days. I exactly. That. But now you fast forward to 2022. They're doing a podcast together on Vlad TV, and they're talking about that whole situation as well. And they talked about how you know Saigon said he let's, lost half his family. About, let's talk about my podcast. Welcome to the culture. Coming soon. Passport boys. And me and Vlad got something cooking. You gonna see my first big guest. And yo, Vlad, you better play my trailer on it YouTube page. Check it out. Right. I've seen right. the Saigon and Havoc. Shout out to both of them. I Shout out to both of them, but it just shows the grown man yeah, growth I mean, both yo, of them grown, saying, like, yo, man. we could actually do a project. And we could talk about our differences. Yeah, I you mean, know? Yeah, it's, and it's, Saigon it's, said he lost half his fan base when that shit happened. Because so yeah. many of his fans were also Prodigy fans. Yeah, because you got to remember, Mob Deep is one of the biggest groups overseas. So, like, Prodigy. Really? If Prodigy was still alive, rest in peace to Prodigy, and Havoc, they can go out and get a bag. They can go do 30 shows, 40 shows. 20 shows. I'm not saying they're going to do big arenas and shit like that, but they definitely could do like House of Blues venues yeah. like I do. You know what I'm saying? When I go overseas. So, you know what I mean? They could definitely go get that money. You know? What was it like when Mob Deep was part of G-Unit? I mean, it was cool. It was cool. You know? I, th- I think I was in the studio with them. I remember it was Mob Deep and 40 Glock. We were in New York and I remember you came in. 
I remember you heard the song. You're like, oh, I want to get on that shit back when they were on G. Yeah, uh, but I remember that. Definitely. It was a cool moment because like 50 had like signed a bunch of people. I think MOP. I mean, those Yeah, yeah Lil Fame was in the room those, too. Yeah, yeah, those there we go. historical groups. I mean, you know, and, and MOP, you know, was legends and, and, and Mob Deep. So it just felt like it was home. It felt like New York. And it was cool. Yeah, and you talk about bulletproof trucks. Uh, Prodigy was the first person I ever saw personally with a bulletproof truck. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, definitely. Like that, that shit was was wild. Man. Yeah, he had the. It was like a gold color one, but we've been had them. We, I was just all black. I remember somebody from Hot 97 got mine, and mine's actually had a bullet hole in the back. Right. So mine's mine's was put up to good use. Uh, academics uh, called uh, old rappers dusty. When you heard that, were you were you offended at all, or? I mean. Everybody has an opinion. I don't really pay attention to what people say, you know, but for me, I give it up. Like when I, like I said, I met um, Big Daddy Kane and Cool G Rap, and I, I was like a groupie, you know what I'm saying? Cause cool I'm, G Rap was on G at one point. Or, no, 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 no. He was, well, he was affiliated, I think. No. Rakim was affiliated with Dr. Dre, but it was never Cool G Rap. He was never. So. Yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. I think. Yeah. I think there was a rumor. Yeah, I think that's where you get there, it there from. There we go. Rakim, there, there, there was a rumor. Okay. Rakim yeah, yeah, yeah. was messing Never with Dre. Yeah. That's all I remember from the last thing with Rakim. Yep, but, yep, yep. Um, you know, Dougie Fresh, Slick Rick, the list goes on. Houdini, Queen Latifah, Moni Love, like those times, MC Light in the Jettas on the subway station. Like I'm hip hop, special ed. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Stethosonic. You know, I'm that eighties hip hop was everything for me as a kid. So I could never, ever, ever disrespect the legends that paved the way. Like, I always tell people, when you, when you see Kane and Ellie Chopper, young boy, you know what I mean? Baby, seen Kane, I tell the story all the time. Yo, who that? Man, that's the first dude that started this big chain shit. Thanks. Big Nefertiti's, yep. Slick Rick, you know what I mean? Dougie Fresh with the beatbox, it's hip hop. See, but I You think, could never take away from yeah. the art form. But, Dudes but, like Jam Master J, even the DJ was important back then. Terminator of X. Of course. D Nice was KRS One DJ, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. This is what I'm saying. So if you ask me about hip hop, we're going to talk about hip hop from the 80s to the 90s. Good times. Like I said, records like Self Destruction. You had Queen Latifah. When mm -hmm. she'd be like, Who you calling a bitch? You and ITY. And it was cool because she was, you know, she was, it was something different. Moni Love, like I said, MC Light was like one of my favorite female rap artists. Yeah, she's dope. And, and oh, oh yeah, um, Miss Melody on KRS One. Miss rest Melody, in peace. Was, rest in peace, Miss Melody. Yeah, she passed away. So you know what I'm saying? Yep. Uh, Hurricane. I'm hip, Hurricane. I'm, uh, well, rest in peace, Hurricane G, who just yeah, passed away. Definitely. And Tame One from uh, the Artifacts definitely. just passed away. Uh, That's crazy. I, think like I forgot that record Artifacts had, but they had a couple of joints there. Wrong Side of the Tracks. Like, yeah, they're, Wrong they're, Side they of the Tracks. You know, they're like kind yeah. of the graffiti. Yeah, like a Far group. Side type of group. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I just want to say this though, right? I think the reason why what academics said about older rappers. Yeah, but being that broke, doesn't, but that doesn't. No, no, listen, but, it's but, not, but, I, I, I don't, I don't, look, you know, look, I don't but agree that doesn't with matter. Used. It doesn't matter. It's like everything is not based on money. Like everybody based shit on. Listen. Okay. Everybody based shit on material things. We can't take away Rakim being a legend, LL being a legend, right. um, Run DMC being legends. You can't take away from somebody's legacy. Maybe because you have more money than them right now at this point. Just be humble. They might have blew their money. They might not have that money, or they might have that money and just not showing it. You know what I'm saying? Listen. Okay. So at the end of the day, it's not good to judge the legends because in my eyes, it's like as the gatekeepers, we can't erase the, where it came from. We can't erase hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm the type of dude, Mr. C, I put him on to a, rack, a record. My man was a favorite DJ. My man, DJ Rough Hands. I'm always going to shout him out. Rest in peace to him. I, like, I remember going to parties with Grandmaster Vic from 40 Projects and these different DJs and the twins and all these different DJs and different music. And I put Mr. C, he didn't know about the Gap Band, the Queens album. Hmm. We had our share. He didn't, he didn't know about that. I put Mr. C on, one of the biggest DJs, the DJ for Biggie and, 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 and Big Daddy Kane. Cause me, I know my hip hop. I feel like I could never erase what hip hop was. And like I always said, I'm always shout out Ralph McDaniels. I shouldn't be shouting all these shout outs cause 
my publicist was like, you shout everybody out. I'm like, I'm gonna stop. You're a publicist? Yeah, I'm a publicist. Okay. Yeah, she was like, you shout everybody out. But like I said, Video Music Box was my first BET, my first MTV. Yeah. So like I said, anybody who disrespects the legends, to me, you're just wrong. Listen. And you I know, academics, he get his money, he got his lane. Yeah. You know, and you know, I, I, you know, he's on Instagram, he's doing his thing. You know, he's for the younger generation. Right, and he's, and, and he's my and friend. And I dig that, because I like the, yeah. the, the younger generation music, too. But like I said, I listen to all genres of music. It could be old school, new school, it don't matter. I feel like if you got an open ear, I listen to all kind of music. I just want to say this, though. I, I don't agree with, you know, academics calling older rappers dusty and broke and stuff right. like that. But the, the reason why I think it hits such a nerve mm. is because... A lot of the older, you know, like the, the original, the 80s, you know, early 90s generation of artists, a lot of times did not really, you know, manage to, to really take care of their business and really set themselves up. Well, it's been like that. No. Hold on, I, I, just want, I, I just want to tell you something. You know, because I remember Fat Joe spoke about this. And Fat Joe said, like, yo, my brother, he carried crates for Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. Right. So, so let's talk about that for a second. Kid Creole from the Furious Five, right. one of the most important hip hop groups of all time. I remember interviewing Melly Mel and we talked about how the message essentially saved hip hop. The message was the first critically acclaimed hip hop song. It, wasn't, it was the first song about, you know, they didn't have rappers rapping about rapping. It was a real social message and it really started to really start getting serious reviews in New York Times, everything else like that. Hip hop started to be looked at as a more of a serious art form as opposed to just a passing phase. Okay. Kid Creole from that group, who is now in his 60s, had to work as a security guard in an area that was so bad that he was always getting harassed by a homeless person uh, coming to work. He ended up getting in an argument with a homeless person, ends up stabbing him to death, right. and is now doing life in prison over that shit. These are, these are our legends. You know what I'm right. saying? Cool Herc, well, I remember well, at one point, well, no, one no, no listen, listen, DJ Premier at one point told me that he was helping to raise money for Cool Herc because he needed like a hernia operation or something because he didn't have health insurance. So if, if all these artists who are speaking up and say, don't, don't talk about our original artists, whatever, how about we actually do something? Like actually put together a program to get health insurance, you know, for our, our, the older why artists. Why don't, why don't everybody in the game just put money into a pot? You don't have to say how much it is because some of us have more money than others. Right. And it's cool, but why don't we just have a program where all the artists, you know, put in money for, but I mean, I'm quite sure the younger artists don't care. They don't know these people. Yeah, but the older so, artists who are speaking up, like L Cool J, could do that. So instead of just... You know, you're basically right. you got being mad at Vlad, academics, you... let's all get together. Nah, and I'll, and I'll yeah, pitch I'm not well. mad at academics. I'll pitch he can say well. what he want to say as him being a man. I don't yeah. give a fuck what he do. What, you know what I'm saying? That's what he do. I'm just telling you maybe you could put something together and it shouldn't take years to think of something like that. Maybe it should be something for like the artist. But there then go. who's going to control that money? That's Someone who already has money. Like, I don't think anyone... Who's going to want to control that program? See, when it comes to stuff like that, that's the logistics that you think about. Right. All right we all donate. Who's this money going to? Are we making sure this money's going this place? Right. Or it's going somewhere else? Or it's going into your pocket? Right. It's Pretty going... sure LL Cool J's not going to pocket the money that's going to I think to, LL, to LL Cool J, artists. yeah, he's one of the ghosts. I think that's what I'm saying. Perfect to do that, to start a program. With, exactly. So LL like, Cool J, if you're listening to this, if for artists, I, I will join yeah. in. I will pitch in my own money as well. Yeah. But, but don't just sit there and, and, and say, like, Academics is fucked up for saying that, and then go out, go well, by we today, all know, let's actually well, we, do something Well, we about all it. know shit is not peaches and cream. Like, there's a lot of shit that artists always go through. Right. The block slows up. You might not be getting the same price for shows. It might yeah. not. Look, there's times where there wasn't no shows. 50 got his money. I got to do what I got to do. People don't know what the fuck I went through. The pandemic. Yeah. People don't know what the fuck I went through. It's just people don't give a fuck about your problems. Hmm. So okay. you tell your friends, look, not saying they don't, but some friends... You got your friends that you feel you can tell your problems to. You got your friends that you tell them your problems, they tell 10 other people. Right. That's just how some people are. That's why you get a therapist. So what I'm saying is, <laughs> we can't just say, just because you're a rapper or a ball player, or you're not going through something, or shit ain't fucked up, sometimes shit happens. 
the money slow up, you could have lost out on money, things happen. So at the end of the day, it would be cool for artists, ball players, everybody to have a program if they fucked up. Well, but ball players do have a program. They have a pension. The NFL, the NBA. I'm talking about when you're not in the league, though. Well, after the league, you could still have you still have a pension. You still have health insurance if you play for a certain amount of time. Oh, all right, well, cool. Yeah, no, well, that's true. cool. Well, the artists, yeah, it's true because, artists because need there's to do a something. players' union well, in artists, these sports. Artists, artists need need to you know do something. But everybody's going to be like some people's going to be like cool, and some people's going to be like fuck them niggas. And that's, that's just how bad. life is. And that's too bad, you know. But honestly, like our older generation. Well, you know, let me ask me, you a me question. Me and Russell Simmons were talking if about you, this. If you wanted to stop you know, from people killing each other in the street. Because you know when you go to Europe, there's really no guns like that. What would be the first thing you would do? Because in my mind, you tell everybody, yo, if we really want to stop killing each other, everybody come out their house and put your guns on the porch, they're going to get collected. You think motherfuckers are going to do that? Nope. But when you go to Europe, there's places where you might not see again for a long time. Certain places they do got them, but in America they, they got it here, sad to say. And, you know, it's just like people are going to do what they want to do. A lot of people don't care until stuff is on their front step, you know, so they don't care about other people. And I'm not like that. I done did charity work. I done did all kinds of stuff. You know what I'm saying? And I love giving back. We always give back. We big on giving back. That's what the G Unity Foundation is about, you know, giving back. And that's what it's about. And yeah, I would love yeah. to give more back when I have, you know, more, even more of my time, when I have time, you know, go talk to people, I, either jails, programs, whatever it is, because I've been, you know, I did stay in a little fed time, skid bids, I don't glorify it, because it ain't shit, there's motherfuckers out there that's, you know, doing natural life for their 20 years and came back and maintained and they're good for themselves, you know? Well, uh, when you say fed time, your fed case, that was over a gun? Nah, it was over passport fraud. Oh, yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I remember the story. Right. You know, when you look at what's happening right now in Atlanta uh, with young young thug gunner, uh, 28 people. Yeah, free the guys, man. Now, now this is not a Fed case; it's a state case, but it's right. a RICO. But case. It, but it's like a Fed case. For them. It kind of yeah. is, right? Because because a state right. RICO is modeled after a federal RICO. Right. Uh, now you've had. I mean, well, you caught the Fed case over the uh, the passport situation. Yeah. Did you ever catch any other Fed cases? No. Okay. Not going with. Why would you ask me? That? Okay, sorry. I don't want no fake. But but you've had the feds. <laughs> but you, you talked about how the feds would show up at your door and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean that's you know I got subpoenaed before for Kate, but you for know, what lawyer take care of it? It was some some henchman. Okay. You know, they wanted me to come in and I don't play them games, so I got subpoenaed and you know I call up Scott Lehman, and take care of it. Oh yeah, but at one point the feds tried to. They wanted to seize a piece of footage of mine that was no longer online, mm -hmm. and I had to call my lawyer. Yeah, and, that's the, and basically, that's the, first, the, the lawyers had to the, fight. You know what I mean? Literally magic, had to fight the feds. Are, those are the magic words, call my lawyer. Call my lawyer. And call like, my lawyer, you know, shut your mouth. I, yeah. I remember they were like, well, we're gonna put you on the stand. I'm like, go ahead, I don't give a shit. Yeah, like, call my lawyer. Put me on the fucking and, stand. Yeah, we're not I mean, gonna just yeah, give it to you. The feds tried to subpoena me in the henchman case. I don't know for what, but I wasn't gonna do it. If, if I had to go to court, I'd rather, you know, go to jail for a couple of months before I take the stand. So you would just, uh, well, you, you would take the jail time as opposed to taking the stand? Of course, but that's what you got lawyers for. I didn't have to do the jail time. We just took care of it. Yeah, I mean, the feds, feds are a scary, are a scary very, group. Very, and very I, I, I was talking to my friend Cavario about this the other day. Mm -hmm. and, and a little bit of the feds. Cavario from Don Deep. Don, Don, Don Deep, yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. Um, I just seen him on um, 50 Show Hip Hop Homicides, which is cool. Oh, he's on that? Okay. Yeah, I just that's seen him get interviewed on that, yeah. I, I mean, the thing about the feds now, the the ninety eight percent conviction rate is a little bit skewed. It's it's designed to make them seem a little more scary than they are because if you think about it, you have a ninety eight percent conviction. Well, rate. Well, they go they go by a point system. So if you got like prior charges, yeah, it goes by your points. The more points you have, the more time. Right, but I'm you saying even do. before then, I'm talking about their conviction. Mm -hmm. They have a ninety eight percent conviction rate, but ninety five percent of the people plead out. So if you think about it, yeah, because nobody want to blow trial with the feds. No one wants to, because because they're able to basically put these yeah. scary ass numbers on you to the point where y'all bleed out. Well, it's just now, like, if you look at the five percent that's left, but no, but if they come, they have something. The feds, like they, uh, one of the biggest machines. You know what I'm saying? The feds and the IRS. Yeah, you know? I mean, those are two machines everybody's scared of. When you look I'm at fed of. paperwork, it's you versus yeah. the United so, States of America. Yeah. <laughs> 
I mean, if you look at it, you know, ever since the mob, if they took down the mob, yeah, then you know, what do you think they're gonna do with the gangs? It's the same thing. That's right. why these laws was created. Right. It was for the mafia, you know? the Italian mafia. You know, because I remember uh, we had DeAndre Bonds on my show. And we were talking about the young thug, you know, uh, YSL Rico case, and he was like, yo, this is bullshit, you know, you know, it's racial. How come you know, you know, do you ever see 28 non-black people ever getting arrested for the same thing? And I'm like, the mafia. He's like, yeah, yeah, you're right. 26 black people on one case? 28. 28. Come on, man. When have they indicted 28 white people? The mafia. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but they had to. They had to. They were seeing like 28 Shut people. That down right there. 28 <laughs> people just knocked off 100 people. We got to get these. Yeah, once they get that conspiracy, you know, you know, it's just, man, you got to be careful in your surroundings, you know. You know, I, like I, I could tell you a story. Um, Crippy, that's my guy. He got, you know, I, I don't think you know Crippy. Crippy got five yeah. years yeah. in the, um, in the uh, six nine case, mm -hmm. you know, he got shot in the stomach at at Philippe Charles and everything. And um, um, a lot of people don't know that, but um, Crippy um, he called me when he when he was running in Treyway House, mm -hmm. and he said, "Yo, they running in Treyway. Let me tell you how crazy the feds are." He's like, "Yo, they running in Treyway House. Yo, you think you call one of the lawyers?" I'm like, "Well, let me call, you know, speak to a couple of the guys and see what I can make happen for you." And he calls me back three minutes later. Yo, they running in my house right now. What you think I should do? I was like, man, they coming in with them flash bombs and your stomach's messed up, your family's in there. Just stand down, homie. You don't even want them to come in there crazy. You know? <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and, and that's like a story. Personally called my phone. You yeah. know what I mean? Where, where, when they was running in Treyway house, they was running in Crippy house too. You know, the feds, they calculated the fucking machine. When you see them at your door, yeah, I'm in there. My door, I'm nervous, yeah. you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's just, you know, I just fall in line. I just want to get money and go on trips and fly the world. I mean, listen, I've, I've told this story before. I remember this was maybe around 2004. Huh? BMF had flown me out to Atlanta right. to party with them because they were trying oh, yeah, to launch the their record label. out right now. It's coming back yep. out in January. I can't wait for well, that. Well, Shout to Lil Meech. You know, and I, I remember uh -huh. I was at Big Meech's house. Uh -huh. Hanging out with him at his mom's house, you know, they're smoking blunts with me, everything else like that. They, they like my, I had the Tupac Rap Phenomenon mixtape that everyone was fucking with right. at the time. But I remember like sitting around and looking at this and going like, there is no way this is not going to end badly. Like this is clearly not record label it, money. I mean, like, no was, one's selling was, any albums here. And was, these guys was, have like 20 Lamborghinis, yeah, billboards. I mean, it, was, it, was, it, was too, it was too much money. You know? it, was, sometimes, it was too much. Sometimes you make too much money, you don't even know what to do with it. You don't even know where to put it. It seemed like that was, you know, on Meech and Southwest T situation as well as everybody around. Like there was too much money. You yeah. can't hide it, you know, unless you're getting it legally. But if you're getting it illegally, it's too much money, then, you know. But that's what the story's all about, man. That's what, you know, 50 got the, the series, shout to me, shout to Southwest T, you know. That's yeah. what it's all about. They wanted the biggest to do it. You know, yeah. I, remember, I remember coming to ATL and seeing the signs. And, the world is BMS. And, they, and, you know, they killing Smack DVD, 20 limos, and, yo, and, you know. Yeah, I, I was right there when that was yeah. happening. But I was really like, okay, let me quietly back up out of this situation. Let me yeah, not hang crazy. out with these dudes. But you know, too, too that tough. really, that really like propelled like, cause everybody started paying attention to Jeezy and Blue Da Vinci at that time. Right. So it was like their careers was going with the BMF thing. Right, so well especially was, Jeezy, know, yeah. Yeah, of course, Jeezy and Blue Da Vinci though. Well, no, I mean, well Blue Da Vinci's rap career never really took off. I think it did. You think it did? Yeah, people knew who Blue Da Vinci was around the world. He, but, but but he he didn't have songs that were really I mean, like had, popping I mean, like how Jeezy went to started jail. Pop. I mean, he had a chance. That came later. I mean, Jeezy, yeah, of course he rocked. The jail, the jail came later. The Snowman shit was a That's classic. What I'm, I'm not gonna take away nothing from that. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, everybody knew Blue Da Vinci. He had a couple of songs that was cool. You know, I wouldn't say it's on Jeezy level, but yeah, that's all I'm saying. Everybody knew who Blue Da Vinci was. He was out there. Now well, because Meech, Meech was pushing him and definitely. putting a lot of money. But behind those him. were the two biggest. That was were the two biggest artists on the label. Blue. Um, those Blue are the, the only two artists on the label. Yeah, it was only yeah. Blue Da Vinci. And, and I, I don't. Jeezy, I don't think was really on the label like that. I mean, he was with them. Well, it business. seemed like it. 
it did kind of seem like it, but then when he signed a Def Jam, it seemed like he yeah, kind then, of yeah, definitely. You know, kind of but backed away people from, look from like that situation. When yeah. they thought, when you initially look at it, yeah, you look at the two BMF artists in my eyes was Blue Da Vinci and Jeezy. Well, listen, B- BMF was a. Uh, it was big. You know, it was an interesting time in life because, like I said, I had never seen that much money in one place ever in Man, life. Man, I was I was happy making you know a couple of mil and had my Bentleys and Benzes. They took it to a whole nother level. Hey, they put you to shame. Right? <laughs> <laughs> they took it to a whole nother level. You know, little rap money you thought was cool, but you, they took it to a whole nother level. But shout out to them as a movie. Yeah, free Meech. Hopefully he gets out soon. I mean, T's been out for a while. I hope Meech gets out. Uh, like T? I said, I, I met him. You had T on real... the show before, though? No? What's that? You had T on the show? Nope. You got to have Southwest T uh, on the I've show. been wanting to get Southwest T. I mean, yeah, I've been I'm talking gonna, to gonna, dudes in Detroit about that shit. I want to hear it. Let's make it happen. Little's the legends of somebody. Somebody out there make it happen. Well, well, you know, I interviewed a lot of the dudes from Detroit, uh, including... Uh, the real. Uh, I love Detroit, man. They got uh, some good food out there. Huh? Yeah, I have never been out there. Yo, Detroit. One thing about Detroit, they got the their strip clubs have some of the best food, man. Really? Yeah, my man Matt and my man Littles took me to strip clubs. Man, the best food I ever had, man. It's like in the strip club. We got some good food out there. Well, you know, I actually interviewed uh, Layden B. Simon, who's mm-hmm. the real Lamar. Oh, okay. From the show. Oh, what? Yeah, he's still wow. alive. Wow. Yeah, he's he, he's. He's crazy in real life. You can't stop the rain. Yeah, I asked him about that. He wouldn't answer it, so I guess it was true. Lamar character ended up killing one of the 12th Street guys, and uh, while while he was basically stabbing him to death, he was uh, singing the song "You Can't Stop the Rain." Mark 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 Furman. You remember Mark Furman? Uh, who's that? He was the police on the uh, OJ case. Right, exactly. That Mark Furman. Okay, and wh- what was he saying? Uh, I don't remember. It was a while ago. I um, plead the fifth because it might incriminate me. Okay, fair enough. But he actually, uh, he shot up uh, Big Meech oh. over, over some situations. Yeah, his his own. I guess like his brother got killed, and he kind of blamed Meech's crew for that shit. So when they they were hanging out in his neighborhood, and he showed up and just shot that up the whole crazy. car. Oh come on, don't give the movie away. Come on, <laughs> give too much away. Well, he didn't die in real life, and the way that he, yeah. he was predict, you know, the way he was portrayed getting killed in the TV show. In right. real life, he's still alive, and I have the only interview with him. How so. do you really know that's true, though? What What's true? Everything. What. And Charles, you think that this is just an imposter? Who I, I just no, I'm not saying he's an imposter, but how do you, he had like proof, like he had pictures from Detroit? Like, No, but I also interviewed the other dudes. Because like, you got to remember, you did interview. I interviewed the other 50 You boys. did interview a dude that said he got shot Yes, I 50. fucked up. Yes, I fucked so, up. So, no disrespect to him, but I, I'm going to second guess you. That was my one big fuck up on Vlad TV. Like, who comes with the proof? Like, imposter who yeah. claimed he was in the car with yeah. got shot. So, and he also claimed he was the president of, of Murder Inc. Right, so you know I'm going to always question you. Yes. We interviewed D. Meeks, who was B. Mickey on the show, and also E.D. Boyd, who, you know, the Wood Harris character on the show. Okay. And they all... Oh, so they all know. Th- okay. They're all co-signing each other's No, stories. no, no, I believe you. You know it's what I'm valid. saying? So, yeah, I didn't just bring an imposter. No, it's valid. It's valid. You know, I've just got to ask yeah, you. Yeah, of course. Sh- and, you know, as you should. <laughs> as you should. And I remember when 50 put up that Instagram Dude. post that fraudulent. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, I just, I just got to just ask you, you know? Eminem just got inducted to the Rock and Roll Hall Shout of Fame. Shout to Eminem. Come on, let's do it. One of the greatest. Shout to Eminem. Always, always loved Eminem, man. He, always loved Eminem. He shouted out, when he got on stage, he named a hundred of his favorite rappers growing up. Even people that have talked shit about him, he even named them. Uh, I thought that was pretty dope. Right. I, I, thought, I thought that that was pretty dope. Shout to Eminem, man. Big accomplishment. One of the best MCs in the world. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if 50 made it into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame at one that point. Would, that would be big. I mean, you got to be, I think it's like, what, 25 years or something? You got to be after your big, your debut album. So I think we're getting, yeah, a few years from now. That will be big, man. But shout out to Eminem. Give him, yeah. his, give him his flowers while he's here. And, you know, he's always helped me in my career. He was on my first album. Um, he wore the Free Yayo shirt at the Grammy. So I'm mm-hmm. always going to 
show him that respect and that love and, and, and salute him as well as Dr. Dre and everybody who else built his legacy, as well as Jimmy Iovine too. Because, I mean, Jimmy Iovine was a genius, Eminem was a genius, Dr. Dre was a genius, and we all fell in line. I felt like that was the best deal ever. Yeah. Uh, do you feel that Eminem will always kind of get hated on because he's white in hip hop? I feel like, yeah, I mean, I feel like Eminem um, always got hated on. From even with, with, with you know, the Benzino and the Source magazine was big at that time. And, mm -hmm. you know, they was calling us house niggas and all kind of shit back then. Because yeah. you're affiliated. Well, you were signed yeah. to Eminem. Yeah, when we signed to Eminem. Yeah. Like, but like I said, color never really meant nothing to me because I'm from New York. It's a melting pot of color. I went to grade school. My first two friends was Ralphie and Frank Havine. I say it again, they was Italian. So, you know, I never seen color. There was white, there was black, there was Indian, there was Jewish, there was Spanish, there was Haitian, there was Jamaican, there was Trinidadian, there was Guyanese. And, you know, Jamaica Avenue was a, come on. I went to Thomas Edison, it was, you know, it was black, it was Guyanese, it was everything. It was always a melting pot of people. So I never felt a way. But with Eminem, nobody ever did anything for me in my career besides him and 50. And I always say, you know, him doing the free AO while I was in jail, because I only had to do about two years, it kept my name alive. You know, they, then they started putting my name in videos, you know, and stuff like that, and the free AO shirt was selling. So, I mean, you know, I'm always gonna, you know, salute him, because he's the man that sold 16 million records, hard copies worldwide. That overseas fan base that G-Unit has, like when they call, when they be like, G-Unit is the Louis Vuitton of, uh, Armenia or the Louis Vuitton of Greece. I done yeah. heard this. Y'all the Louis Vuitton, y'all the Hermes uh, of Dubai. Well, I done heard this. G-Unit, not just 50, G-Unit, what we did accomplish too. Because sometimes people don't see Tony A.O. accomplishments or, or Lloyd Banks or other guys in the group. You know, so all that clientele comes from Eminem. Because like how we can go out and do 40,000, Eminem can go out and do 80,000, 40,000 is nothing. He could fill Detroit Stadium, it's nothing. You know? Yeah. So all that clientele, all that overseas, and being attached to Eminem was the best deal. That w Without that, I feel like we wouldn't have had as much success without Eminem and Dr. Dre. And Jimmy Iovine, and Interscope, Shady Aftermath, it was a fucking movement that was just fucking unstoppable. And you seen when Eminem singly handed took down the Source magazine, because Benzino was always just fucking mad. I, I don't know why he was just always mad. Yeah, I've never. We done been called everything for being down with Eminem. House niggers, all kind of shit. The Source. I remember um, me and my homies we ran down on Benzino in Miami. That was I think that was the year when um, Shook got shot. I was on my ignorant shit. We ran down on Benzino. Me and my mans. And we was like, yo, I'm like, yo, why you always put me in magazines, put in, put in magazines, talk about M.A. Like, he was, he, he, he kind of, he wasn't soft, he ain't back down. But then we was like, yo, we give you a pass. And we was like, yo, you want it? He was like, you, he was acting like he didn't, we was like, you want the pass? And he was like, yeah, I want the pass. You know what I'm hmm. saying? But at the end of the day, that's old shit. I don't want to, you know, go back and forth with niggas online. I don't do that shit. You know what I'm saying? But the beef with Benzino and Eminem, I don't know what it was. It was like. He was just always mad at him. And I looked at it like, yo, this is a dude that is looking out for us. Fuck what color he is. He can fucking spit bars. He got fucking platinum records. He's humble as fuck. He don't bother nobody. Humble as fuck. He never bothered with nobody. But once you say something about him or his daughter, it's a fucking, it's a rap. He gonna rip your fucking head off lyrically. He's gonna rip your fucking head off. And that's what he did with nails in a coffin. Rip motherfuckers head off. That's what he's gonna do. Mm -hmm. And you know, you trust me, Eminem is the type of dude, he probably got diss records for everybody in the vault. You never know, he got have a diss record for me. <laughs> <laughs> he's one of them motherfuckers, even though I would never disrespect him, but motherfucker is one of them motherfuckers eat, sleep, shit, hip hop. One of the top MCs in the world, bro. I don't give a fuck what color he is. He did me a favor. You know, that he didn't have to do. Well, uh, speaking of daughters, you talked about how your daughter was the only black person in her school. Right. At one point. Yeah. Was this elementary school? No, junior this, high? Is, this is like high school. High school. Definitely. Okay. 
So you send her to this all-white school, mm -hmm. and something bad happens. Well, I didn't know it was going to be an all-white school. I just initially liked the house. I moved in the area. I kind of didn't put that in mind because I came from, from nothing. I'm south side Jamaica. My mom's house is way smaller than what I got, you know, so I came from nothing. So I was just more excited about the house, but wasn't thinking about the dynamic and how it was. So yeah, my daughter was probably like the only black person in the school. And, you know, I'm not saying that everybody in the school is bad people or everybody in the neighborhood is bad people, but you know, you're gonna have your, your bad apples out the bunch, you know? Right, right. and what happened next? Oh, what happened next is she was actually on a hit list with teachers and everybody else. What is a hit list exactly? A hit list is when a kid writes a hit list. Oh, and people says she I wants to kill? To, I want to kill this person, this person, that person. You know, okay. and the school I want to kill teachers and it was different kind of people. He wanted to kill Indian people, black, you know, and the school found out. And, you know, and I, the way the kid worked his magic to come back in school, I don't know how it was possible, but that's what happened. So being Tony Yayo mm -hmm. and the way that Tony Yayo reacts right. to people who threaten him or threaten 50 Cent or people around him. Right. I would imagine it'd be heightened with your own daughter. Oh, right? definitely. It, it, it came to a point, you know, where it's heightened, but you, I got to think logically. It's a little kid, a little nerd kid in his basement that's writing something, and he's, he's harmless. You know what I mean, he can't crush a grape in, in a food fight. But those be the ones sometimes that come and really shoot up the school, but he's been warned, and now, thank God that, you know, they own this stuff faster now. You know what I'm saying? But for me, for when it comes down to... So I'm not, I don't claim to be the toughest guy, but if it comes down to me or my family or, or like 50 or my friends or anybody close to me, it's hell, it's hell of jail. You know, I want to go to heaven, but it'll be hell of jail. Right. Either way, when it comes down, I never claim to be the toughest, you know, but people in my neighborhood respect me. I always have respect. But it's, you, you, you fuck with my family or me, it's hell of jail. I don't care. Like when that happened in my mom's house, I was running around crazy in, in the hood. The same day, I had to get the call to tell me, yo, now go home, you ain't gonna find nobody now. You know, so it's, it's, it's hell of jail, man. So, did your daughter stay at that school? I mean, she graduated. This was like her junior year, she stayed. So she stayed for the year and a half yeah. or so? the kid was out for a couple of months, he came back. And it's like, you know, I lived there. You might as well just tough it out. She toughed it out. Yeah. You know, but it was a lot of, you know, racial stuff going on. That was swept under the rug. Well, I'm sorry I had to go through that, man. I mean, that's yeah, some tough. shit. I mean, that's some shit you expect in Mississippi. Or I just something. think it was just tough. It no, I think it's tough because I didn't have to grow up like that. Like I said, there was a mixture. There was white kids in my school, but there was a lot of black. There was a lot of Indian. There was a yeah. lot of mixture. When you're in a picture being the only white person and black person in the school, but you know, coming from you know the hood, and you move somewhere and you find a nice house where it's probably you know less crime rate or whatever. You know, you're, you're not putting it into mind that she's going to be in school or how can it affect her like that. And of course, she's a strong black young woman right now. She's only 19. Okay. She's, you know, very responsible. Oh, so this just happened a few years ago. Yeah. Oh, shit. She's okay. only 19. This is what, like two, three years ago? Yeah. Damn. And they let, you know, it was, it was, it was fucked up. They let the kid back to school. You know, that was the um, most fucked up part for me, but you know. Some people are privileged more than others sometimes, or some people might have connections in a school, or, or you know. Or well, I mean, it's, it was a public school or private school? No, it's a public school. It's hard to kick kids out of public school. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like the way it's set up. So, so when, is the, when does the line stop? When I, don't, I don't know. List? I mean, clearly the line wasn't crossed if you had, according if to. If your kid's name was on a hit list in school, how would you feel about it? I'd lose my shit. Well, there you go. Yeah. I would, I would lose my shit. But, I, but, I'd probably take. But this you know, is when yeah, but, I, I, wouldn't, but, I wouldn't have kids in school like that. But but listen, but and I understand. But there's a catch twenty two to everything in life. You move out the, you get successful, you make some money, you move out the neighborhood so you don't get killed, right? Right? So rappers, what do they do? We gotta move out the hood because we gonna get killed. We stay in the hood. You got, sure you can't have your cars out there. You can't live right in the hood, or you're gonna get killed, right? That's what mm -hmm. happens to every rapper, right? So you move out the hood, right? And then you move out the hood, you might be around a whole different environment now. It might be a lot more white people or more Italian or, or more any religion or race, right? But it's a whole different vibe. Now you got other stuff to worry about. 
You know, you might be in the supermarket and people looking at you like, what the fuck is he doing here? Or he's like, look like an alien, like what the fuck? But it's all good, you know, it's to each his own. I don't let shit like that bother me. But for her, for her to be in an environment where, you know, she's the only black person in the school, yeah, that could fuck with you a little bit. You know what I mean? When your mom's house got shot up, who was in the house at the time? Um, my mother, my sister, and my niece. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, so your daughter was not, not in the nah, house? No, my daughter wasn't there. And God bless, you know, because you know, I've always been blessed. Nobody got hit, you know. There was actually a bullet in the stove, like right by a gas line. So I always think God is good. I'm a big Oh, because it could have blown up. Yeah, it could have oh, blown shit. up. It hit the stove. Damn. Yeah. Damn. I mean, you know, they had silences. So, you know, when you have a silencer, you're a little more comfortable with doing things. There's no sound. Nobody's going to call the police. By the time you figure out what the fuck is going on, you're totally confused. Did and the guys who did it, did they ultimately... Uh, cooperate with the police and say they. Oh um, yeah, the driver, it? the driver cooperated. It's so the I'm driver thinking. is the one who shot up your house. You, no, henchman shot up the house personally. Oh really? Yeah, he shot up the house personally. Oh, because the driver. That's how mad he was. Oh. And I understand. You know what I'm saying? Because they, you know, when when you smack somebody's kid, I understand. You know. I I totally understand. It was like kids and women ain't supposed to be involved in beef. So I guess the rules was broken, but. After a point, you know, if you shoot out my mom's crib, it's fuck you forever. Like, I don't give a fuck what happened. But at the end of the day, when kids and, um, and uh, women get involved, it gets a little more crazy. So I understand. Your kid got slapped. Yeah, he, was do, do, he did what he's supposed to do. But he was under investigation while he was doing that for the drugs. So while you talking all this John Gotti shit, your phone is tapped. See, motherfuckers are stupid. I don't, I don't get on the phone. I don't need to talk to a whole bunch of gangsters to validate myself in life. I've been around all that already. But what I'm saying is don't make yourself hot. Don't be stupid. Because when it, when it comes out of the come down, Henchman could have, like, when my, rest in peace, my man Lodi Mac, they could have took Lodi Mac, kidnapped him, broke his legs, broke his arms, broke his ribs, put him in a whole fucking body cast. You know what I'm saying? Like, he didn't, my whole thing is rest in peace to my nigga. He didn't have to go out like that. Like, you could have kidnapped or kidnapped me, tortured niggas. Niggas wouldn't have said nothing. We'd have been in the hospital all fucked up and would have been looking for revenge. Okay, so if you got kidnapped and tortured, you wouldn't say nothing? Why would I? Hmm. It's the code of the street. It's, it's, it's a code, right? You got to understand that what the snitching thing is, you never want to leave your family with that legacy or your kids with, yo, his father was a rat. And they're all rats. Uh, okay. It's just, it's just different shit. Me, I come from the street. So if a nigga kidnapped me and break all my bones, what the fuck I'm telling him? The first thing I'm thinking is some get back. That's what you, that's, I mean, oh, coming okay. from the street aspect, but uh, if you're a civilian, of course. Okay, but let's, let's take it one step further. Okay. Let's, just, let's just say that your daughter got kidnapped. You wouldn't call the feds and try to work with them to try to get your daughter back? I think I'm going to try to get her back myself. Okay, that doesn't work. First. Okay? How, how you, 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 you failed in that. It got to work. <laughs> nah, come would. You would. You would not work with the feds to get your own kid back. I'm not saying, look, look that's, a, that's a tricky question because it's it is tricky. a tricky question. It's a question that I, can, I couldn't answer to you. Okay, but you see but what, what I'm, what I'm you, saying with this question, right? What I'm telling to you is the lifestyle that a lot of people live are different. You can call the police and it'd be cool because you're black. Mm -hmm. It's cool, right? Yeah. Right? Which you can is get what in I'll a do. Yeah. I, if I, you I get never in a situation, said I would do anything other right, than that. Right. If you get in a situation and somebody fucks you over, you do what? You sue them instead of shooting them, right? Mm-hmm. It's, I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with that. A lot of business is, is acquired like that. Yeah. Motherfucker, you can't just go kill everybody and shoot everybody. No, sue right. them. Because you, you do know that you pay the police, right? With right. Your with your taxes. Right. Your taxes pay the police. I understand that. So what I'm saying is. You, you make you, a nice income, so right. a lot of money. You probably paid right. easily hundreds of thousands yes. of dollars over your lifetime yes. to the police directly. Yes, right, in taxes. Right. So what I'm saying to you is. It's a tricky situation because you got people from the street, right? Which we come from. Mm -hmm. and we grew up our whole lives not trusting police, not telling. Yeah. Right? But then your lifestyle changed and some not all police is bad. You might have a family member that's police or some cops that, you know, a sister or brother, they might be police or CO or whatever, and they might be cool. Not saying everybody's bad, you know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, for people like me, it's rules. And one of the rules is never talk to police. Yeah. It's, it's just rules. It's just how we came up. Okay.
You know, I mean, I don't want to use a scenario with my daughter and this and that. And like, those are tough scenarios to answer. Right. Well, remember the, the 60 Minutes interview with Cameron where, he, where uh, Anderson Cooper said, yeah, if he a said serial he killer was living next to, your li- next to your uh, house, would you call the police? He said, no, I'd move. Yeah, but Cameron was probably, he'd probably say he'd mind his business. You wouldn't know for serial killer because a motherfucker's minding his business. Where we from, we mind our business. I mean, do you, do you watch the Jeffrey Dahmer situation? Yeah, that, the, the that Jeffrey Dahmer, yeah. uh, you know, series on Netflix. That shit, like, was, that shit was crazy. <laughs> like, if no one called the police, crazy, huh? he'd still be fucking eating people to this day. You know what I'm saying? Like, the whole at, thing at some was point, that, you got to be but, like, listen, but, this but, is but, out of my hands. But that was in a neighborhood where the police obviously didn't care about the people in the neighborhood. Okay, well, it was also saying? like a gay thing. They didn't really care about gay people. You know, they, they figured they was just all lovers brawls. Like, you know, I don't want to get involved. Right. You know, they, they would bring these dudes back and for them to get eaten. Like, it, it, it was fucked up, but I don't know, man. Like, like, like you have to, know. you know, if your car gets stolen, you have to call the police to make a police report. Like, you Definitely. have to interact with the I mean, with if you police. get into a car accident, Exactly. Yeah. Like, you, you have to, have to you could be anti-police but it might not. But it might not be me to dial the police. It might be the person that got, <laughs> I might tell them to dial 911. <laughs> okay. Because, you know, as us coming up in the hood, we was allergic to them three numbers. Yeah. My father lives with me. You know, he had heart attacks, and I, I really didn't really want to even dial 911. It's done, you know. Somebody in the house did it, but I'm just... Your dad had a heart attack, yeah. and you had someone else dial 911. No, no, no. I mean, I, you know, we dialed it. I, I happened to be in the house, but they dialed 911. Like, I don't... Like, so I'm not your saying... Fi- your fingers cannot dial No, 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 no. I'm not <laughs> saying my fingers cannot. I would have definitely called. It's my dad. Rest right. That's what I'm saying. But what I'm saying to him is, like, I never was a person. I never dialed 911 ever in my life. Okay. If it was a car accident or somebody, there's either police there in the city or the person call the cops. I, I guess it's just a very dangerous precedent when, when someone is like how you're describing yourself right now. Because if you're not going to call the police, then the next logical step is I have to go handle it myself, which right. in turn, but, but the whole, which means that you, you risk your own freedom. But you know what's the whole solution? Just stay away from all of it. That's but, my solution. But, but you can't stay. Yes, you Trouble can. comes to no, you no, 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 sometimes. No, no, no. Never? No, because no. if you go in some place where you got to bring a gun, you don't need to go there. Facts. I learned that years ago, being... Places, my man was a DJ, clubs got shot up all the time. We go to the places where shit gets shot up. That's what we used to do as kids. Yeah. We know there's a chance if we do a party in Southside on Rockaway Boulevard or Linden or on the North Side or on the South Side or on Jamaica Avenue, or there's a chance that some shit can get shot up. Diamond Gym on Jamaica Avenue, shit got shot up. Banks got shot, my brother got shot back in the days. Your like, brother got shot? Yeah. Uh, older or younger? He's older than me. Okay. Well, what was the situation about? It was just a big shootout at, at a spot. Oh, so it, it was wasn't him broke. directly Yeah, being it was involved. just mad people got shot. You okay. know what I'm saying? So He survived, What right? I'm saying is, yeah, Banks got shot. He got shot in the foot. Banks got shot in the stomach. Was that you the know? same situation? Yeah, same. Oh. So what I'm okay. saying is the parties we used to go to was hole in the wall spots where niggas bring their guns. You might not get searched. I done seen shit happen. So you go to the places, I learned, you go to the places as a kid, you go to the places where you don't need a gun. If you need a gun, then don't go there. That's how you stay alive. That's how you make it to your 30s and your 40s. It's cool to be an OG. I know a lot of niggas knock it, oh, OG, unk, oh, oh, oh. They feel good saying that. But at the end of the day, it's good to make it to to these ages over here. Being in your 30s and 40s, making money, traveling the world. Yeah. Not a care in the world. That's what life is really about. Taking care of your friends, your family, Travel the world, you know. When we overseas, I feel free. When I'm in Greece, I'm here. You, know, it's really, it's minimal threats. The energy is totally different. I don't like to brag about it, but you know, you in the Four Seasons, you getting croissants and the turkey and the caviar pancakes. Everybody <laughs> talk about, and, you know, you know, you start trying other things. Escargot, you meeting, you got a lot of yes. rich friends that not just fifty. Me, I'm making. Rich friends, like my friends Maharaji, Maharaji, they own IMG Worlds in Dubai, one of the biggest um, indoor uh, amusement parks in the world. Hmm. You know, so I make my own relationships. So you meet people that motivate you. Because that's what life is about. Not staying stagnated, being motivated, right? Mike Tyson was the one that actually got you to try caviar for the first time. Yeah. I don't know if he remembers that I was at a party and expand your horizons, yeah, yeah. I always tell that, I always remember that. It was a party, Serena was there. Venus, it was like some crazy party. It might have been 
the premiere um, to get Richard Die trying, mm. the movie or something, you know. And it was crazy. It was like one of my first times meeting, you know, Mike Tyson, the GOAT, you know. And I never forgot that. He probably don't remember the story, but I always, it's going to be stuck in my head. Cause yeah, man, Caviar Expand your cool. horizon. Yeah. Escargot, it's, yeah. it's cool. I've tried Escargot before. Escargot. I, you know, last time I was in Paris, I tried you it know, again. You know what's crazy? We was, um, we was coming from Finland, and um, it was like, we was like um, in a nice part of the airport, you know, the VIP lounge, and it had some burgers. Like, they was looking good. And um, so I'm talking to my man Devon Davy. Uh, he's one like one of the tour managers, and then it's Chubby Chubb and and my man Passport Flav. So I'm about to get a burger. You know what the burger was? Reindeer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like cool. I eat caviar. I, I ate escargot. I've ate alligator. I you know, that, yeah. you know, down south Texas. Mm -hmm. You know, they they alligator and stuff like that. I ate that. But never reindeer burger. I was like, nah, I'm good on it. <laughs> oh, so you didn't do it? Yeah. I, I, I didn't do it. <laughs> you want to eat Rudolph? Burger. Nah. <laughs> Christmas time's coming soon too. I was like, nah, I'm good. No rain, no reindeer beer burger. I remember someone tweeted this. They said, uh, "Who's more loyal, uh, Tony A or Memphis Bleak?" Right. Who do you think? I'm, I'm, I'm going to say me. Yeah. But, well, I know, think you've, but Memphis, you've done like, more, you put in more work yeah, than Memphis Bleak. Yeah. No, no, it's not a shout out to Memphis Bleak. No, it was just more shit was going on. More, more shit was serious, going on with you than Jay-Z. Like I said, than Jay -Z, 50 than Jay-Z. Yeah. Jay-Z is the guy, you know, everybody loves, so he didn't, you know, no problems. And 50 is the guy that had problems with everybody, so it was always an issue. It was, it was more to deal with, dealing with, you know, with the 50 cent situations. But, you know, you make your bed, you lay in it, right? Mm -hmm. You came in the game with this guy, it's only right. So it's like I, I chose not to never jump ship if it was a beef or a problem. And like I said, I don't get on the internet and claim to be the toughest guy, but I'm a loyal guy. If you getting jumped, I'm not just going to let you get beat up and run away. I'm not, you know, that never was me. We, we, we had certain lessons, you know, we was, we was taught by. Yeah. And certain morals. Yeah, I'm, I'm the same way. I, never, I would never let, I, I've jumped in when, when people I'm with get jumped, I jumped Definitely. in. You know, unfortunately, that's always been, hasn't been a situation yeah, for me. I'm, but. Yeah. You know, in reverse, but yeah, I, I yeah, would never definitely. let. If you got jumped, I would jump in. I at least, yeah, you know, I wouldn't shoot no one, but I would but push you, people I, off of you. A, like. a wise man once told me, "Know your friends for who you are." Like if you know your friends are soft. I remember who kid used to always tell us he's pussy. You know, if you know this one friend is loud, get ready for, you know, might be problems. If you know this friend is is grimy, you know, you just know your friends for who they are. Yeah, that right there showed me a lot in life, and a lot of friends I fell back from. It's not no problems or nothing. It's just I'm to a place where, you know, if you're not hit me, I done flew you around the world, like I said, flew to Africa, Germany. You, you had girls on my behalf. You done went to clubs in my behalf. You done skipped the line to every club half your life in New York City and around the world. Um, you done drove my cars. You done fuck bitches in my condos, fuck bitches in my house, fuck bitches on the boat. Probably fuck bitches on a plane on my behalf. Probably mm. got some of these bitches because of what G-Unit did. And they'll never hit you just to say hello or how you doing, you know? So you've now done your second world tour Definitely. since we started doing interviews. Yes. Uh, seeing y'all, seeing you and uh, Uncle Murder driving the yacht yes. was, was kind of like a, a moment for me. I was Definitely. like, oh, look at two people I fuck yeah. with. Yeah, you know, we, me, me and Uncle Murder used to do interviews back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah Murder is my Uncle guy. Murder, you need to come back and do another interview. Right. No, right. no, no. We got to get murder back on here. Yeah, murder's exactly. my, but, murder's know, two my... people who I, I have fucked with through various yeah. stages in my life are, are on a big ass yacht. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? I'm, I mean, I'm happy for murder. You know, I've always been a fan of his music and um, 50 was a fan of his music. Um, 50 actually wanted to sign him years ago. Mm -hmm. And I'll let you tell him the story because it's a crazy story when he comes up here. And um, we just have fun naturally. It's really me, him and like the barber. They call us the three amigos and you know, we go from every country and we just usually find weed, get the best food, you know, like waking up in the morning, get that complimentary breakfast if you're in the Four Seasons. Because everything is different in Europe. Like the sodas are smaller, the, um, the turkey just tastes different. Just, it's just like you got to get, you know, like you get one American soda, you know, you have to get two little sodas to add up to one soda. Yeah. Just waking up for the breakfast and being in the best hotels in the world and just, you know, being in Greece and you waking up to the water or... Or, or being in, you know, Dubai, and we got the jet ski cars on the water, which was fun, and you're staying in the W, and dinner's good, and you're having all kind of fish, and 
it's just, you know, it's, it's one of the things that I never thought I'd be doing and just feel blessed and humble. Thank God that I am doing. But the tour was amazing, man. You know, we fly the world, we, you, you, you know, you get to see different things. And we was on a private jet most of the time. We went from the private jet to the yacht to the tour bus. And it, it, it definitely was a good, um, good uh, opportunity and a good time. You know, a lot of shows were packed out, 40,000 people. And just to be 20 years later and still be doing it, you know, it was great. I mean, how many countries did you go to? I think we did like about 25, 26. We went so many places, Greece, Dubai. Uh, we was just, so many, Switzerland, um, Finland, different parts of Finland. I, I mean, uh, considering the love you get overseas mm -hmm. and how it's relatively safer overseas, right. do you ever think about Re moving? Very, very too safe. I'm, I mean, you know, I mean, that would be, when, when the money gets right, I wouldn't mind having like a spot in London. But not Paris. permanently moving. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind having a spot out there. Okay, but like you having, wouldn't move away from America to live overseas? Um, I mean, you never know. I'll be open to anything. It just, it just depends. You know, it's, it's definitely, you know, less guns there than in America. And I, I love London. I love Paris. I love Dubai. I love Sweden. I love so many places. I love Germany. I love every place damn near I go in the world. We was like the first artist to perform in Armenia. Yeah. You know, this trip, we went to different parts of Finland. You know, and you know, 50 keeps adding on to the shows. We got the pyro, we got the dances. We got violinists now, we got oh, DJ right. Chubby Chubb, we got the band. So it, it, it's just good, it's a team effort. Cause it's not just all about the artists, you gotta see the production. You know, the people mm. that's bringing the pyro, you know. You got Devon Davey, you got Ice Cold, road manager, the people is putting out the slips, making sure everything on, on the show is good. You know, even, even the way of the stage, like, there's, there's, there's things, there's a lot of technical stuff that people don't know behind the scenes. The truck got to go to the next state. You know, we'll fly in, the truck got to come in there. Production, of course. There's so many people behind the shows, you know. I, I mean, you know, a lot of artists at 50s level really just don't tour anymore. You right. know what I'm saying? What is it that's really, you know, it's not like he needs the money at what, this point. What, what artists you know that don't tour anymore? Jay-Z. Like, I mean, Jay-Z's like the only one. Eminem. Well, Eminem, I'll, I'll say, but besides that, everybody well, else Well, I mean, tours. I just named you the, you know. Well, Jay-Z and Eminem, but everybody else tours. Kanye tours. Uh, um, well, yeah. Well, no. Yeah, you got well, kind of. I mean, Kanye tours and then, you know, Kanye cancels tours, the world tour. The Weeknd tours. No, but these are all younger artists. You see what I'm saying? These guys are all a bit younger. I'm, I'm talking about guys, because 50s, what, like nah, maybe Kanye 40? Kanye is in his, what, 39, 40? Well, 50s in his mid 40s. He's like a few years. He's, he's like, like two years younger than me. So he's like what, 47 or something like no, that. He's 46. 46. Right. So uh, what I'm saying is, which is, you know, Eminem is 49. He's the same age as me. Jay Z is like 50 well, something. What, all right. If you want the answer to that, I feel like Fifth is a hustler. He's gonna go get the money. Who's gonna turn down money? If the right of money, money around, uh, money uh, is there, I'm quite sure Jay Z or, or Eminem is gonna go take it. It just gotta be the right number. I, I don't know. No, I, I think. I think. I mean, come on, like. Eminem could easily get a million dollars a show now, right? Yeah, but Eminem's totally different though. But, but, but here's what I'm saying is that like a lot of people are just like, fuck it. Uh, I'm sitting on a hundred million. But he still does, million. he still does festivals here and there. Eminem? Yeah. Every so often, but I'm saying he did, but he doesn't tour. You see what I'm saying? Eminem will do a spot date here and there once a year or something. Right. You know, Jay Z might perform at his own, you know, uh, you know, Made in America thing. Well, you, well, for you a know, it's 50s date, mentality. 50s mentality is to get all the money. Get all the money. It's not like he needs it, but why turn it down? Yeah. I know I wouldn't. Yeah. No, I mean, like I said, I, I'm I've not always, turning down no money. You know, I've, I've always respected, you know, 50 as a business person. You know, uh, over the years, He's posted some shit about me that's not true. I posted some listen, shit about him that's not listen. true. And, and both of us have taken the shit down. You know me, I don't, I, don't, I don't want to talk about 50, but he, all I can say is he's a hustler. He exactly. has a hustler mentality. Hustlers don't turn out no money. I'm quite sure when, when, even the younger guys, when they drop, you got Drake and 21 Salvage album where he's listening overseas all day. You got Little Baby. They, they're going to tour. Those are the two, two of the hottest albums of the year, hands down, right? They're yeah. going to tour. They're going to get the money. That's a smart thing to do. I think tours is what keep artist names alive. And 50 is at high demand overseas. G-Unit is at high demand. Like I got my own tours coming. I done been to Qatar and Dubai and you know, 
it's not all about what 50's doing, it's about what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I done been on my own tours. You know, me and Banks went on our own Australian run. I think it was, what, 219? Me and Banks. Oh, before the pandemic? Yeah, we, we went on a whole Australian run, me and Banks. You know, it wasn't big arenas, but we, we play our field. It was House of Blues type events, you know? Right. A places that hold maybe 2,000 people, 1,500, some 3,000, some less. But we making our money. See, that's the whole thing. We, we're big over there with, like I said, we like the Louis Vuitton out there. We went on our own tours. I done been to Qatar on my own, Dubai on my own, went on my own tour, me and Banks tour. Me and Banks went on a tour in 219 and then me and 50 right after. So it's just like, you know, one thing I say about overseas is they appreciate hip hop. It's less guns, not saying it's sweet. It could be a knife fight and some dudes have guns. Some, some stuff happened in London in certain places. But it's not as much guns as America, so you feel a little safe and a little more relaxed, you know. But out here, there's guns everywhere. You can go to the store and buy a gun. That ain't nothing. You know what I'm saying? You could, dudes could print them. You could print, 3D print a gun now. So much shit you could do. There's ghost guns. There's all kind of shit you could do. But over there, you don't really hear about that shit. It's not like that. But, you know, when your money gets to a certain level, yeah, I would love to have a condo in Paris or a condo in London or a condo in Amsterdam, you know, I would love it, you know? Oh yeah, no, having multiple spots is, is amazing, man. Right. I mean, having yeah. a spot in LA and New York, the fact that I can go to New York, right. and don't have to get a hotel, right. all my clothes are there, you know, my, my bed is made, I got right. my own washer dryer, I, I got my own doormat. That's man. my whole thing, like I own, I own a few pieces of property, but I would love, you know, to keep a spot in New York and probably get a spot in Houston and mm -hmm. maybe a spot overseas. That'll be dope. That's like my goal. I'll probably get a spot in Houston because I like it out there. Yeah? Yeah, I love it. Great food. You know, shout out to the Mastros. Yeah. They just popped mad like 400,000, maybe a half a million of 50 champagne. Mm. You know, so shout out to Houston, H-Town. Yeah. I love Houston, man. The food is good. The vibe is good. The weather is nice. 50 got it on Smash out there. I'm loving it. Yeah. You know, uh. and the people, they treat you good. Police wave to you and shit. You don't feel like a criminal out there as much as you do in New York. <laughs> it's cool. How do you feel uh, now that your meme has kind of grown? Like oh. Every time we do an interview, there's more and more like Vlad, viral memes. Vlad, every time, we, you, know, you, you know, I get on your show, it's, it's, it's a different kind of crowd. Like, you know, I had a doctor, Asian man, step to me. Yo, I've seen you on Vlad overseas. Yo, I've seen you on Vlad. I've seen you on Mav Hoffa. So, you know... These platforms got big now. Like these platforms, like Math Hoffa Show, your show, um, Gilly the Kid, uh, um, Nori, like these, these platforms are getting bigger and bigger and these interviews, it's one hand wash another. I got some shit to talk to you about, you got some shit and we, we might do numbers, we might not. But you know, I mean, you always told me the first interview, you know, this first interview is gonna be big. You know, cause I feel like sometimes you gotta open up to the people. I was in the shell, I was in a place where I wasn't really talking to nobody. The COVID had a lot of people stressed, mm -hmm. no shows, hard get money. It was tough for everybody. You just felt depressed. You're in the house. You know, I'm used to being overseas and traveling. Because right. when I sit around, I like, even though, you know, I had this show, Welcome to the Culture, where I was shooting that. Like a lot of people, oh, what are you doing? What are you doing with yourself? You don't got to tell people all your plans all the time. They think you're not doing nothing. But right. I had a whole podcast I was working on. I got like five albums done during the COVID. Mm. So, you know, it was just a little depressing, like being in the house is what I, everybody felt. You know, no shows, no nothing. You know? Right, well, plus, mm -hmm. you know, me and you kind of had an issue that we had to get over. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like but I'd my post, issue is- I, I, I posted a video and we don't have to get into yeah, it, but, but you but, had an issue with a video I posted and I'm but, like, all right, you like Tony, Tony potentially has an issue with me, but hopefully we can get over but, it. But Vlad, you got to understand this. And one thing I learned is like sometimes that, that's one time that I got in my emotions and I'll probably never get into my emotions again because being an artist, you're public property. And people said a lot of fucked up things to me. Fuck your moms, fuck your family, fuck your kids, fuck this. And you just get used to it and you just got to have thick skin. You know what I mean? And that's just how it is. Fuck right. reading comments. Why am I worried about this person, that person? Because it's not, you can't let the universe take over you. It's, it's about what I'm doing. I can't let, you know, people get to me. That's why I read books. You know, one of my favorites is, you know, The Art of War, The Art of Not Giving a Fuck, Machiavelli. I'm a real, real book reader. And I feel like that helped my mental a lot. I read the Bible, you know, like those are three good ones right there. The Art of Not Giving a Fuck, 
Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck, Art of War, Machiavelli. How do you not give? That's one book I haven't read. Huh? I've read part of Art of War, and you know I've read parts of the Bible. Yeah. But the Art of Not Giving a Fuck. I know it's a bestseller. Oh yeah. It's, what, it's what's one book. of the keys from that book? How do you um, not give a fuck? As someone who's given a whole lot of fucks <laughs> during his day. Um, there was one part in the book where it's about responsibility, taking like taking on like your, your, taking on your responsibility, like. We all make mistakes and sometimes we don't want to hear it, but the book is teaching me that everybody's not perfect and everything is not going to be your way. Just kind of live life. So, you know, it's like a lot of mistakes like I made, you know, like say if I fuck up some money or something, it's, it's my fault. You got to learn to take fault, but how you fix that is responsibility. So like say I fucked up a half a million dollars. I'm like, yo, fifth, I need half a million dollars. I'm fucked up. I got to pay this or that. Yo, look out for me and I get it back to you. Or anybody. Or Jimmy Iovine or anybody. Anybody in business. Or Vlad. One of your workers. Miguel. Fucked up. Yo, I need to borrow this. And you say no. You can't be mad. It's your fault. Your responsibility is figuring a way how you fix it. And that was one of the major things in the book. Was fault and responsibility. And you felt you lacked some of that beforehand? No, I didn't feel like I lacked anything. It was just something that I learned. Uh Uh-huh. You know okay. what I'm saying? Sometimes things might not go bad. You might not uh, 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 think you might not uh, hit your projections for the year on something. And, you know, it's kind of your fault. You don't want to take it. You might be wrong taking it out on people or wrong people, family, whatever. But it's your responsibility to fix it. And that was one of the main things in the book. Fault and responsibility. Art of war, of course, that's good. You got your moral law. You got your heaven. You got your earth. You got your commander. And you got discipline and something with discipline. But those are the five moral laws. Yes, moral law, yeah, heaven, earth, commander, and discipline, and something else. And then Machiavelli, of course, is like one of the greatest books ever. The moral law, heaven, earth, the commander, yep. and, and method and discipline. What did I just say to you, though? Same thing. Okay, yeah. there you go. Don't let there me. <laughs> I'm gonna never lie to you. I, I done read the 48 Laws of Power. I read. I read a that lot that of was them. a great one. That, that yeah. actually, the 48 Laws of Power actually uh, changed my life trajectory. A little I bit. mean, it got, to me, the 48 Laws of Power got some wrong, right, wrong and rights in it. When I look at it. Yeah, no, I mean, just like anything else. In fact, right. shout out to 50 because the first time I got to meet Robert Greene was during a book signing when he did the 50th Law, right. the and 50th I actually law. showed up and I brought yeah. in my you know, Robert Greene books for him to sign right. and also the 50th Law. Yeah. And I got to interview, I, we'll play a little clip. Yeah. It's, about, it's kind of inspired by 50s life. Yeah. And it's the fact that, you know, everybody's got a lot of fears inside of them. Mm-hmm. You know, like being afraid of obviously death, but afraid of change and being alone and things like that. And if you're not kind of aware of the problem, if you're not confronting what you're afraid of, then those fears are kind of governing your life and determining what you do. And usually when people are afraid, they only do like one thing. And when you get rid of your fears, you feel like you can try four or five different things in life. It gives you all this freedom and mobility. It's like you're let out of prison. So it's all about the power you can have, just like he got. The 48 Law of Power was one of the big ones in jail. And yeah, there's some stuff like that, like don't outshine the master. There's some things that are cool. Well, well, I'll, some... I'll, I'll tell you what, what, one of my greatest takeaways from the 48 Laws of Power. And a lot, I was definitely unaware of this beforehand, is that when you win, you stop. Oh yeah, I mean, have an exit you don't, plan. You don't, you don't spike the ball, you don't do the victory dance or whatever, because that is the easiest way to turn a victory into a defeat. When you start to tr- rub the person's face in it and, and brag oh, yeah, about definitely. how I you mean, won and they lost, you might trigger something to that person that'll make them Snap. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in there. Trust your enemies, hate your friends, never outshine the master. There's stuff that's do right, then there's learn how to use people. Certain things are, are wrong and certain things are right. I like to read different books, but, you know, the Bible is the one main one for me. You know, I, I read the Bible every day. So, you know, but all the war, all the not giving a fuck. Like I said, Machiavelli. I told you, I named you the five moral laws. And there's, there's a couple more. I got to go over that book because there's a lot more stuff in there. So, since I'm going to eventually read, write my own book too. Okay. So since you read the Bible and you're religious, yes. do you believe in heaven and hell? 
I, I don't want to talk about religion. I just tell you what I believe in. You know, I'm not, I don't want to get too crazy with it. My media, learn from media training, getting media out of jail. Training. Stay away from politics and religion. and religion. There we go. That's the first thing my media trainer told me, man. That's how we're going to end it. Tony Yeo, yeah. always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Vlad TV, what interview is this? This is interview number four. We doing one four. every fucking month, man. Interview Taking number over four. Vlad TV, man. And, and, and the Tony Yeo podcast is coming to Vlad and TV. And the Tony Yeo we're just, podcast we're just still doing coming to Vlad work. TV. We're doing a whole bunch of shit out here, man. Mm -hmm. And check out Welcome to the Culture. Vlad's going to play my reel. It's coming soon. We out of here. Boom.